The time is 519. I call this board committee meeting of the West Coast Independent School District to order. Uh, being that it is a committee meeting, we do not require a quorum. <clears throat> there will be no decisions made. And uh, what we're doing is uh, recognizing students and their achievements and, and all the great things that they've done while here at school. Uh, that being said, we'll go into item number two, student recognitions. If, and also another thing is that if your child gets recognized and, and uh, if you would be so kind as to uh, allow other people to come in and, and, and take a seat while, uh, they, while their kids come in. So if your, your child has come in, and I mean, I'm not telling you to leave by no means, <laughs> but if you would be courteous and uh, allow other people to come in, that would be very nice of you. Thank you so much. 300 students that were recognized. So there's about 600 parents <laughs> that were, that's go, are going to be coming in. Uh, so we're going to move on to item number two, student recognitions. Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, we're very honored to celebrate success of our students, their teachers, their coaches, and their principals. We have Mr. Robledo, who will be guiding us through the recognitions tonight. All right. Well, good evening, board. We'd like to start off by recognizing our Special Olympics. If they can please come forward. Special Olympic participants. All right, tonight we want to celebrate a special group of students who recently competed in the 2018 Special Olympics. Even though they faced many challenges, their spirit of competition is recognized as we're proud of how they well represented our district at this <coughs> event. We want to start off from Central Middle School, Rolando Garcia, second place, 400 meter dash. We also have Christian Lopez, second place, 50 meter dash. Okay. Representing West Laco High School, Perla Puente, third place, 50 meter dash. Not here. Um, representing West Laco High School, Maria Amaya, first place, 10 millimeter. Uh, assisted walk, 10 meter assisted walk, excuse me. We also have Orlando Rodriguez, second place, 25 meter wheelchair race, and first place tennis ball throw. Orlando. Representing West Laco East High School, Benito Muniz, second place, tennis ball throw, first place, 25 meter assisted walk. And we also have Nicole Garza, first place, 25 meter assisted walk. And we also have Nicolas Montez, first place, tennis ball throw. If their parents are here, can they please stand and be recognized? Parents. We would also like to recognize coaches and Special Olympics coordinator. Uh, we also have here today uh, Raymond Lara, Lamar Jones, Annabelle Molina, Liliana Zuniga. Yeah, also, and we want to recognize one more time, we need to give him a, a certificate. Christian Lopez, second place, 50 meter dash. <laughs> Thank you very much, Special Olympians. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations.
Okay. We'll move on now to uh, Battle of the Books. And as part of our Lit for Literacy initiative, our district held a very special competition for book lovers at the elementary and middle school grades. The team answering the most qu correct questions to several <coughs> reading assignments were declared the champions of Battle of the Books. And here are the students. Let's have an applause as they enter the room. And with us here, we have the elementary school champions from PFC Mario Ibarra Elementary. <laughs> Team members are Sean Gutierrez. Sean, if, as I say your name, can you please step forward so you can receive a certificate? Sean Gutierrez. We also have Alexis Lopez. We also have Kaylee Rodriguez, who is their captain. We also have Tristan Trevino. And we have Monique Garza. The team sponsor is Ruby Garza. And we also have Jennifer Valle. Okay. She's with B Garza. Okay, you're with the next group, okay? Do we have the group from B Garza here? That's everybody. Okay, so we have here from B Garza, let me recognize you. Uh, the middle school champion from B Garza Middle School team members are Cristina Cerda, Jocelyn Reyes, America Garza, Ricky Rosas, Brianna Montiel, and their captain who is here. Jennifer Valle. If their parents are here, can they please stand and be recognized? Parents. Yeah. Battle of the Books, congratulations. Congratulations. All right. Keep on reading. Get up. Yes. Up next, we'd like to uh, recognize some of our artists from our school district. If they can have a big applause for these winners in the VASE or VASE competition. All right. So several of our very talented young girls competed in the regional visual arts scholastic event and advanced the state competition. From West Laco High School, we have someone here who received a Division IV State Medal, and her art teacher with Diana Juarez. This is Sky Muniz. Just <laughs> Representing West Laco East High School, also received a Division IV State Medal, Priscilla Alvarado. <laughs> She's not present today. Uh, our next schedule, or our next student, was selected to receive the Texas Vase Gold Seal Award after earning a perfect score on her entry. With over 600 entries at the state level, only nine students in the region received this award. Angie Ann Escalon. Uh, her art teacher is Horacio Ramirez. Another West Lacoiste art student also received special distinction. This student received an honorable mention in the 34th District Congressional Art Competition, sponsored by U.S. Representative Filimon Vela, and that is Ricky Flores. The art teacher for uh, Mr. Flores here is Maria Miller. How about a big hand for these students, and if their parents are here, can they please stand and be recognized? Parents. Thank you very much, students. Congratulations. You can exit this way. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right. Let's move on to our next one, where we have our, some uh, band students from Cuellar Middle School and West Lacuise High School. If they can please enter the room. Band students. How about a big hand for our band students as they enter the room? Look familiar. 
<laughs> now these band students are from Dr. Armando Cuellar Middle School, and we want to congratulate uh, these school bands who recently competed in the Region 28 UIL Concert and Sight Reading Evaluation and earned superior rating from all six judges. Dr. Armando Cuellar Middle School Symphonic Band recently won the Sweepstakes <coughs> Trophy for the second time in school history. Now let's recognize them. If, as I say your name, can you please step forward so you can be recognized? Um, we have playing the flute, Miranda Ramirez. Also playing the flute, Clarissa Alvarez. Also on the flute, Julia Lopez. Okay, on the trumpet, we have Victoria Sustaita. <laughs> Jathan Garza. <laughs> also on the trumpet, Jonathan De Leon. <laughs> Ricardo Sustaita. <laughs> Playing the clarinet, we have Anna Reyes. Isabel Gatton, <laughs> Riley Caballero, <laughs> also playing the clarinet, Daniela Banyagua. Pretty sure I said that wrong. <laughs> playing the horn, we have Sarah Hernandez. Also playing the horn, Jonathan Hernandez. And we have Jer Gutierrez, also on the horn. Bass clarinet, we have Mia Leal. Also playing bass clarinet, we have Maria Fernanda Perez. Trombone, Erasmo Cuellar. Also playing the trombone, Nathan Martinez. <laughs> Alto saxophone, Priscilla Caballero. <laughs> and we also have alto saxophone, Magali Laraga. Not here. Okay. Baritone, Clarissa Dominguez. Tenor saxophone, Jada Delgado. <laughs> On the tuba, we have Frida Camero. <laughs> Barry saxophone, Leila Garcia. <laughs> Percussion, jo Josh Blas. <laughs> also on percussion, Giancarlo Ortiz. Also in percussion, Martin Perez. <laughs> percussion, Andrea Noriega. <laughs> Tristan Quintero. <laughs> and finally on percussion, Alejandro Alejos. <laughs> Congratulations, if their parents are here, can they please stand and be recognized, parents? And congratulations to their director, Awayo Martinez. Congratulations. Thank you very much, students. Thank you very much. You. Congratulations. Good job. Good job. All right, let's, also, let's bring out now the West Laco East High School Honor Win Ensemble who received UIL Sweepstakes Award. How about a big hand for the kids?
come up this way. Ah, okay. Make another row, sweetie. Make another row. Make another row. Can't mistake me. She looks familiar too. All right, so this is the Honors Wind Ensemble for West Laco East High School. Let's start off in the flute section. We have Arlette Grimaldo. <laughs> Lori Rodriguez. Right here. Cassandra Galnares. Aisa Garcia. Nubia Madrigal. <laughs> Alyssa Aguilar. <laughs> we have clarinet section. Andrea Perez. <laughs> Maria Villanueva. <laughs> Liliana Alcantar. Ariana Alcantar. <laughs> Angelica Cerda. <laughs> Valeria Montemayor. <laughs> Sydney Caballero. Let's move on to bass clarinet, where we have Sarah Garcia, Karina Ramirez, alto saxophone, we have Soraida Castillo, Cassandra Gongora. Let's move on to tenor saxophone, Armando Castro. Baritone saxophone, Joey Ayala. Trumpet section, Vianney Ibarra. Ilian Lopez. Also in the trumpet section, we have Leila Castillo. Alexis Anguiano and Jose Valdez. French horn section, Ernest Casas. Tiffany Zambrano. Nathaniel Cavazos, French horn. Moving on to trombone, we have Daniel Gomez. Alexandra Mejia. <laughs> Bass trombone, Jose Garcia. <laughs> um, Neum, I'm not sure. <laughs> Uniform. Neum. Euphonium. Yes. All right, learn something new every day. Jerry Reyes. <laughs> Isaac Castaneda. In the tuba section, we have Chris Palomo. Palomino, sorry. Okay. Let's move on to uh, percussion. We have Victoria Mena. Joshua Chairez. Dante De La Garza. Janice Carillo. Miles Peinado. Nathaniel Almaguer. Kiona Espinosa. Neida Gutierrez. All right, con once again, congratulations. We'd like to recognize their uh, director, Armando Cuellar, and 
And if parents are here, parents, can you please stand and be recognized? Parents. Thank you very much, guys. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good job, guys. Congratulations. And congrats, congrats. And thank you for all your hard work. Okay, up next we want to congratulate our high school UIL students who competed at the District 326A UIL Academic Meet. These students devote their free time to prepare to face off against schools like Beta Science Academy, MedTech, South Texas High School for Medical Professionals, Harlingen, Harlingen South, San Benito, Los Fresnos, Brownsville Hannah, and Brownsville Rivera. How about a big hand for all our UIL academic students who are here? We're going to start off by recognizing the students from West Local High School. The literary criticism team won third place at district. Team members are Krisha Anyo Neville. She's not here, right? Because I think I said her name wrong. Uh, Maya Garza. No. Nope. Noah Madrigal. Noah, please step forward and be recognized. Thank you, Noah. And Justin Anseline. Not here? All right, we also want to recognize Brian Pena, who won second place in persuasive speaking. Brian Pena, not here. Uh, winning second place in district and fourth place at regionals in computer applications, Alejandra Garcia. The uh, journalism team won second in district. Team members are Brianna Miranda, and uh, she also won first place in feature writing and headline writing. Jasmine Star Casas, is she here? Jasmine, of course. Now uh, Jasmine won second place in feature writing. Uh, the computer science team won first place in district. Team members are Pedro Castoreno. And that's Castorena. Uh, Jose Hernandez, Jose here, okay. Uh, Ian Aranda, who placed second, Ian's not here, and Rolando Garcia, who placed first. All right, well, we do have their coaches here. UL coaches are Edna De La Cruz, Marco Tirado, Monica Sinfuentes, uh, Adrian Villagomez, and Alfonso Garcia. Congratulations to the coaches. Thank you for being here. If the... Uh, Parents are here, can they please stand and be recognized, parents? parents. We'd also like to recognize Arinette Campos. She has a couple of medals on her right there for ready riding. Arinette Campos. Wow. Okay, and she is a district champion. She won first place, and she was placed also six at regionals. Con congratulations. <laughs> congratulations, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Congratulations. Good job. Okay, up next we'd like to recognize the West Laco East UIL teams, who also brought home several district titles. How about a big hand for the West Laco East UIL academic team? Oh. The group is the accounting team, right? All right, so let's, uh, let's recognize these individuals here. The literary criticism team won second place in district. Team members are, and as I say your name, if you can st step forward please, Bianca Cosme. Victoria Mena. Humberto Romo. 
And this person won first place individually in advance to regionals, Elizabeth Fabella. The journalism team brought home the district championship title for the third consecutive year. Team members are Wendy Olivares, Aitza Roque, Now, Aitza placed second in headline writing and fourth in feature writing. We also have first place in news writing and editorial writing, fourth place in editorial writing at regionals, and was a first alternate at state. This person is Angela Cabrera. So several students advanced to state, uh, winning fifth place in ready writing at the state UIL academic meet, Victoria Mena. Also at state, the West La Cruz High School accounting team brought home a silver, silver medal, second place in the entire state of Texas. The team had already collected the 2018 District 326A and Regional Championship trophies, winning first place at all invitational meets. This marks the sixth consecutive year that the West La Cruz High School UIL accounting team is undefeated at all invitational meets attended, including two meets in the San Antonio area. Wow, that's impressive. This is also the school's ninth consecutive district championship in a county. Let's recognize the team members. Ashley Foz. <laughs> Winning fourth place at district and ninth at regionals, Andre Campos. Individually winning first place at district, second at regionals, Rocio Limon. And individually, placing second at district, won fifth place individually among all 6A students at the state meet, Haley Germain. All right, and we would like to recognize the writing coach, Wendy Ramos. Joe Ramos is the journalism coach. Joe Ramos is the journalism coach, and the accounting coach is Gume Raurel. If their parents are here, can they please stand and be recognized? Parents. Thank you very much. Congratulations, UIL academic team from West La Cuis. Good job, guys. Good job. Good job, guys. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, I'll do the this one's at the K and this one's. Was the police night today or what? Okay, up next we would like to recognize two teams from the Career and Technical Education Early College High School. Come on out, kids. As they competed in the Area 10 Future Farmers of America Career Development Events competition. <laughs> Good job. Okay, so these are all our FFA kids from uh, CTE Early College. And winning third place, as I say your name, if you can step forward, please. Winning third place in district nursery landscape team are Yvette Osorio. Marisa Torres. Gerardo Osorio. No, not here? Okay. Winning second place district, the uh, floricultural team consists of <laughs> Daniel Hernandez, Kimberly Guerrero, and Joshua Salazar. All right, so competing through West La Cruz FFA, the nursery landscape team won first place in district and qualified for state after placing second in area. Members are Felix Herrera, not here, okay. Edna Nieto, 
Placing third individually, Kiana Garcia. <laughs> Winning second individually, Natalie Marquez. And winning first place in district, Joe Balderas. Not here. Competing through the West Local High School FFA Florida Culture Team, also winning first place in district, members are Viviana Tirado, <laughs> Clarissa Savala. Clarissa also placed third individually. Winning second place, Victor Romo. Winning first place, Isaiah Montanez. <laughs> Want to make sure I get it right. And their sponsor is Sonia Munoz. I don't have your name down here. Okay. Did I say your name? Me and Carlos both need to go see his head take off. About that. Okay, we have uh, one more that we need to add. Uh, this is Alexis Vias, who is also part of the Floriculture team. Alexis Vias. All right, if their parents are here, can they please stand and be recognized? Parents. All right. Mr. Samoto would like to take some pictures of his team. Congratulations. Good job, guys. Good job. Good job. Congratulations. Good job, guys. I am talking into the mic. Carlos Martinez. Is that better? Okay. All right. The following group of students have a very special distinction. Let's go ahead and bring out these students as they have earned their associate's degree from South Texas College. Okay. So these students have earned their associate's degree from South Texas College before their high school diplomas. So West Local ISD is very proud to offer this opportunity to our students and we want to honor our students for dedicating themselves to this very special accomplishment. Let's recognize these students. From CTE Early College High School, the candidates for Associates in Welding, we have Jonathan Andrade. Okay, if you're here, can you please step forward to be recognized if you're here. Jonathan's not here? Okay. Uh, Lionel Berasa. Robert LaBeouf. Francisco Marin. Leslie Reyes. Ray Romo. Cassandra Salazar. Juan Sanchez. Jose Vargas, okay. Students earning their associate's degree in advanced manufacturing technology, they are Diana Barbosa, Brianna Diaz, Eduardo Gonzalez, Angel Lopez, Isaiah Montanez, Yvette Oro Osorio. Manuel Rudolfo. Lisbeth Torres. Damaris Valadez. All right, congratulations. Congratulations, students from uh, CT Early College. Congratulations. All right. Congratulations. Okay. Carlos. 
Carlos. Parents. Parents, if you're here, can you please stand and be recognized? Parents. All right, up next, let's recognize several Westlaco High School students who also graduated from STC with an associate's degree. Westlaco High School students, how about a big hand for these STC <laughs> graduates? And as I say your name, can you please step forward to be recognized? Obtaining their associate's degree in biology are Dina Gonzalez, Esmeralda Mendez, Nancy Ortiz, Pamela Savala. Obtaining an associate's of science in interdisciplinary studies, Antonio Cavazos. Obtaining an Associates of Arts in Teaching, Michelle Mata. Obtaining an Associates of Arts in Criminal Justice, Yulisa Tijerina. And obtaining an Associates Degree of Science in Engineering, Darren Viegas. Congratulations to our Westlaco High School students for obtaining their associates <laughs> degree. Congratulations. Wow. If their parents are here, can they please stand and be recognized? Parents, please stand. Congratulations, students. Good job, guys. Good job. <coughs> Congratulations. All right. Okay, up next, we'd like to recognize a group of students who are members of the Business Professionals of America. Come on out, how about a big hand for these students as they enter the room? All right, so these students from Business Professionals of America, these students competed at the state level and qualified for national competition. And as I say your name, can you please step forward to be recognized? We have Enrique Ornelas, fifth place. Fifth place in Java programming. Fourth place in basic office systems procedures, Vanessa Velasquez. And fourth place in advanced word processing, Alyssa Perales. Uh, another person, he is not here. Uh, third place in digital publishing, Emmanuel Lopez. <laughs> Their sponsors are Amanda Rodriguez and Alicia Ginez. <laughs> if their parents are here, can they please stand and be recognized? Parents. <laughs> Congratulations, students. Congratulations. Good job, guys. Good, Good job. job. Congratulations. 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 At this time, we'd also like to recognize our uh, Business Professionals of America students from West Laco East. How about a big hand for them as they enter the room? All right, so we have three students here. So from uh, Business Professionals of America, placing third in payroll accounting, Haley Germain. Third place in advanced accounting, Rocio Limon. We also want to recognize Blas Garcia. Blas uh, received or served as the Region 3 President for Area 2, Blas Garcia. And their sponsor is Enrique Gonzalez, sponsor. If their parents are here, can the parents please stand and be recognized? Parents.
Congratulations, students. Good job. Good job. Congratulations. All right. Let's move on to tonight. We want to congratulate our high school students who competed and excelled in the Rural Grand Valley Livestock Show. Students, come on in. Yeah, CTE. All right. So these are students from uh, Future Farmers of America clubs, uh, and they put in countless hours to develop their shows and their exhibits. <coughs> We're going to recognize the students first from CTE Early College High School. And as I say your name, if you could please step forward and be recognized. Marisa Torres. This is not Early College. Is this high school, West Laco High School? Was West Laco East? Okay. Let's, you all stay right here. We'll go ahead and jump to the West Laco East students. Okay, so these students competed in several events and we're extremely proud of all these students who excelled in this tough valley competition. And as I say your name, please step forward and be recognized. An uh, Angela Torres. <laughs> Areli Rincon. <laughs> Christian Cromer. <laughs> Diego Rincon. We have Janelle Medellin. <laughs> Mia Avila. Richard Garcia. Valerie Romero. Victoria Villa. Placing fifth in goats, um, Aide or Aid Ortiz. Fifth place in goats, Evelyn Martinez. Fifth place in lambs, Cameron Cromer. Fifth place in horticulture, Kayla Contreras. Fifth place in breeding goats, Superior Award and Shop Projects, Tristan Garcia. Fourth place in horticulture, Victoria Villa. Second place in lamb, lambs, uh, Brendan Cromer. Second place in cattle, excellent award in shop projects and auction, and $800 in the cash scramble. This is Benjamin Bravo. This individual received an award for excellent award in shop projects and auction, Miguel Garza. <laughs> Superior award in shop projects at auction, Heather Mendez. <laughs> Second place in cattle and goats earned $900 in the goat auction, Rene Torres. <laughs> First place in breeding pigs, Danielle Bravo. First place in cattle, Jocelyn Rojas. And this individual won the grand champion in the cattle division, and that is Audrey Riojas. And their sponsor is Rolando Gonzalez. Parents, if you're here, can you please stand and be recognized? Parents. Congratulations, students. Good job. Good job. All right. Congratulations. Okay. To what's going on? Okay. Let's go ahead and bring out the FFA students from West Loco High School. How about a big hand for these students and their sponsors? What's the cool high school? 
How are you doing, Ben? Congratulations. All right, kids, come on out. And a little Ben. Okay, so many of these students exhibited several animals in projects, and tonight we want to honor their top awards. These students also worked extremely hard to compete in the livestock show. Now, as I say your name, well, let's let them all get in here first. All right, as I say your name, if you all can step forward or wave so that way we can recognize you, okay? All right, we're going to start off with um, Aaron Borojas. Borojas. Aaron? Aaron Borojas, not here, okay. Uh, Andrea Cavazos? Blaine Brunneman? We have Charles Juarez. Is Charles here? Not present. Not present? Okay. Cody Juarez. No, Cody. Conrado Garza. Okay, also from West Local High School, Kendall Selman, who also was second reserve gem grand champion in the heifer. Kendall. And also in the Heifer Division, first reserve grand champion, Kylie Selman. And we also have fifth place and grand champion breeding rabbits, Morgan Parker. We also have um, grand champion senior showman and grand champion junior in the Isba Bull Showman, Brittany Garcia. We also have overall grand champion commercial breeding goats, Brian Cavazos. <laughs> and we'd also like to recognize also here today, uh, Ben Garza's here. And I know we have several other students that are, that are here that are not on my list, but we'd like to congratulate you guys and recognize all of y'all for being involved in FFA. Congratulations. <laughs> Oh, you know what? There's another page. All right. Okay. Daisy Ramirez. Start right here. Okay. So we're going to recognize you guys. Uh, De 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 Angelo Garcia. <laughs> Dylan Cavazos. Dylan Payne. Emmanuel Silguero. Francisco Tostado. Hunter Robles. Ileana Guerra. Jackson Galvan. Jasmine Garza. Jesus Garza. Joseph Dominguez. Justin Calderon. Carly Combs. Cassandra Zuniga. Lorraine Garcia. Luis Valerio. Marco Ramirez. Miranda Garza. Nathan Parker. Nathaniel Tostado. Raylin Villarreal. Rihanna Gonzalez. Ryan Gonzalez. Sabrina Turner. Okay. 
Okay, let's see, who else did I, did I, um, the rest are also here? Okay, continue down here. All right, let's go on with uh, Anai Tostado, fifth, fifth place goats. Fifth place rabbits, Ashley Sada. Fifth place breeding gilts and rabbits, Daniel Galvan. We have fifth place market goats, Ethan Lozano. Fifth place market hogs, Cora Mares. Fifth place market goats and heifers, Rihanna Rihanna Renteria. Rihanna? Fourth place market goats, uh, Adriana De Anda. Fourth place breeding goats, Aisha Gomez. Fourth place breeding gilts, Jackson Galvan. Fourth place market goats, Justin Garza. Fourth place steers, Miranda Garza, Miranda. Fourth place in heifers, Third place in open, Julissa Garza. Fifth in junior and third place in open heifers, Gabriel Cavazos. Third place in lambs and steers, Elizabeth Garza. <laughs> we have third place in rabbits, Emily Cortez. Third place in lambs and second place goats, Jenna Martinez. Jenna. Second place in photography, Carlos Aaron Tamez. Second place in junior and third place in open heifers, Abigail Gonzalez. First place and second place in breeding ship, sheep, Daniel Cavazos. Fourth place, Market Hodds. Second and third place, Breeding Gilts, Lily Ford. First place and third place in Junior Showman and Market Hogs, Kara Ford. Third place in Goats and third place in Champion Senior Showman and Lambs, James Gomez. Third place and reserve champion showman in lambs, Esteban Rocha. Third place, junior Zebu Heifer. Second place, open Zebu, Lauren Garcia. Second place and fourth pla place in breeding gilts and lambs. Second and third place in intermediate showman in lambs. First place and fifth overall. Intermediate showman in market goats, Cooper Ford. Second place, breeding gilts, Mia Ramirez. Second place, commercial breeding goats, Noah Cuellar. Third place, junior showman lambs, second place in steers, reserve division champion in market goats, Joseph Leal. Fourth place in lambs and first place in steers, Faith Garcia. First place in rabbits, James Payne. First place in junior and fourth place in open heifer, Carly Combs. Second reserve grand champion heifer, Kendall Selman. And first reserve champion heifer, Kylie Selman. All right, I think we got everybody recognized. All right. If their parents are here, can they please stand and be recognized, parents? All right. 
I, I can't hear you. What did you say? What did you say? <laughs> Dylan Garza, we'd also like to recognize Dylan Garza who's here with Westaco FFA. Recognize here Jacob oh. Zuniga, who is here. Okay, we also have Kayla Zuniga here, also with Westaco FFA. Okay. And we also have Rowdy Sandoval, who is here as well. Congratulations. Okay. Did everybody get recognized from Westlaco FFA? Ben Garza, of course. <laughs> All right. And we'd also like to recognize their sponsor. Is it on here? Mr. Cadena. Your name, sir? Uh, their sponsor is Juan Cadena from Westlaco FFA and Alonso Garza as well. Thank you very much. Congratulations, students. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations. Good job. Good job, Ben. Good job. Good job, guys. Hey, was that your sister over there? Congratulations. 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 Congratulations, guys. Hey, do me a favor. Go to the mic. Congratulations. Go to the mic. Congratulations. Congratulations. Hey. Congratulations, sir. Hey. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Cadena, you're our ag teacher at, at the high school. Yes, sir. Uh, I noticed that there's a, a lot of young uh, FFAers. Yes, sir. Uh, what program is that, or how does? Those are our junior FFA members. Uh, we start them young and we grow them to, to become uh, leaders at the high school level. Now, what grade can they start? Uh, they start nine years old in third grade. Really? Okay. Yes, so, so if you're a third grader in what's called SD, you can get into uh, the yes, FFA. Sir. Yes, sir. Great. And, great. and not all the districts do that. We're one of the fortunate districts that, that do uh, use our junior FFA members. Good. So junior FFA? Yes, junior sir. Junior FFA. And I great, can attest great. to that. My son belongs to it, and Noah will be in third grade next year, and he'll be joining the junior FFA. I know that uh, back in the day when I was a little boy, uh, it was a long time ago, <laughs> the only choice, uh, the choice was uh, 4-H. Now, right. now we're offering the FFA also in juniors. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Cadena. <laughs> Thank you guys for the support you give our, our well. organization. Okay, up next, let's bring, do we have the early college FFA students? No? Okay. Okay. What? Oh, the electric car. All right, up next, we'd like to congratulate the Westlaco Electric Fast Team for their first place finish during UT RGV Hestec Green Power USA. Come on out, students. All right, guys, I know we've done a couple of stories on you all already, right? <laughs> and their vehicle is right there. Ele all electric, right? Okay, so the electric fast team won first place at the UTRGV Hestet Green Power USA South Tech Electric Car Competition. And as I say your name, can you please stand and be recognized? We have Daniel Roque. Jose Alfredo Jimenez, Jose Flores, Janelle Cuellar, Luis Harley Aguilar, Richard Ibarra. Also members of the team are Juan Mata, Pablo Barbosa, and Jerry Gonzalez. The engineering CTE instructor is Thomas Padilla and Carlos Perez. And there is their car. Parents, if you're here, can you please stand and be recognized? Parents.
All right, congratulations. Congratulations, kids. Congratulations. Good job. Good job. Congratulations. All right. Up next, yes. Up next, we would like to congratulate the West Local High School dance team, the drill team, the Dreamettes. How about a big hand as they enter the room? Now, this group of young ladies recently competed at the Showtime International Valley Dance Spectacular and, re and won the coveted Sweepstakes Award. To win this award, the team had to receive a Division I rating from all judges in all categories. The Dreamettes also won the Judges Award for Team Medium Division in Prop, and they also received the Supreme Award for Best Overall Pop Routine at All Levels. All right, let's recognize the team members. Members of the sweep Sweepstakes team, are Olivia Canales. As I say your name, can you please step forward to be recognized? Olivia Canales, I hear. Kimberly Villanueva. Kiana Reyes. Heaven Pena. Emily Juarez. We also have Mia Hill Vialon. <laughs> Miriam Torres. <laughs> Kate Rojas. <laughs> Nayeli or Nalea Orozco. <laughs> Alexis Martinez. Ana Mancias, Giselle Herrera, Tiana Guerra, Kayla Gomez, Erica Garces. We'd also like to recognize the following young ladies that also competed at the Valley Dance Educators Contest for the first time this year. They are Cyan De La Garza, Gabriela Hasso, Kaylee Martinez, Calista Robledo, Alyssa Robledo, Veronica Rangel, Elizabeth Lopez, Evelyn Fondon, Jennifer Hernandez, Celeste Vasquez, Trisha Noriega, and Brianna Hernandez. All right, we'd also like to recognize the team sponsor, Raquel Alvarado Rico. Ms. Rico. <laughs> Parents, if you're here, can you please stand and be recognized? Parents. <laughs> All right. Congratulations, girls. Thank you. Congratulations. Good job. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right, let's move on now to the West Local High School Boys and Girls Track Team. Come on out, guys. Okay, tonight we're going to recognize the West Local High School track programs as they continue to produce winning seasons. Let's go ahead and bring out the girls team as well. Got part of the boys team here, also the girls coming out. All right, so the Westlake High School track programs continue to produce winning seasons. Let's start off with the boys track team and several of its members won individual district titles and advanced to regional and state competition. The, part, the Panther varsity track and field district champions are uh, in the triple junt, Gabriel Gonzalez.
In the 200 meter run, we have Alex Garza. And we have district champion, regional champion, and state qualifier in the 100 meter and the 400 meter run wheelchair, wheelchair division, Josulis. Uh, head coach is Gus Cabrera. All right, boys, you can stay right there. We're going to move on to the, to the lady, the Lady Panther varsity track and field team, and they are the 2018 district champions for District 32-6A, and this is the seventh year in a row that they have won a district championship. And they also claim the area championship as well. Okay, so let's start off with the team members. We have Stephanie Almazan. If you're here, please step forward and be recognized. Uh, Ilya Cantu, Aliyah. Leah Solis. Uh, Aliyah Garza. Natalie Garcia, not here, okay. So we have an area qualifier in the discus, Jasmine Barrios, Jasmine. Area qualifier in the shot put, Gia Cavazos. No? Oh, please step forward to be recognized. Gia. We have area and regional qualifier in the 3,200 meter and the 1,600 meter run, Destiny Longoria. Area and regional qualifier in the 3,200 run, Samantha Sinfuegos. We have district champion and area qualifier in the pole vault, Ava Perez. Area and regional qualifier in the 800 meter run, Savannah Mendez. Is district champion in the shot, uh, discus, discus and shot put, third place at regionals in the discus, Sierra Gonzalez. Area qualifier in the 400 meter dash, Emma Arndt. <laughs> district champion in the four by 100 meter relay, district champion and area champion in the four by 200 meter relay, regional qualifier and third place finish in the four by 200 meter relay, Jenna Martinez. District champion in the 4x100 meter relay, district champion in the district champion and area champion in the 4x200 meter relay, regional qualifier with a third place finish in the 4x200 meter relay, Chantel Barrera. We have the uh, district and area champion in the 4x400 meter relay, state qualifier, Victoria Nguyen. We also have a regional qualifier in the 300 meter hurdles, district area champion and state qualifier in the four by 400 meter relay, Lisa Marie Sanchez. <laughs> district champion in the four by 100 meter relay, district and area champion in the four by 200 meter relay, four by 400 meter relay, regional qualifier with a third place finish in the four by 200 meter relay, state qualifier in the four by 400 meter relay, Emily Ebarb. <laughs> District area regional champion in the long jump. Area champion in the triple jump. District champion and regional qualifier in the four by 100 meter relay. District and area champion and state qualifier in the four by 400 meter relay, Eleanor Arndt. <laughs> and their coaches are Patrick Shelby, John Roche, Cindy Smith, Joshua Cantu, Billy Rivera, Jaime Cavazos, uh, Liliana Skalinski, and their head coach is Pablo Almaguer. If their parents are here, can they please stand and be recognized? Parents. Congratulations to both the boys and the girls track team from West Laco High School. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations, boys.
job. Congratulations. Two more. We got swimming. How to running now. And then baseball. And uh, that's it. Glad I've got the water. <clears throat> Okay, up next, we'd like to recognize a very special swimmer from West Laco High School. Come on out, Daryl, and Daryl's coach. Okay, so tonight we want to recognize a member of the West Laco High School boys swim team who is standing right here before us. And this is Daryl Wells, who was a state qualifier in the 100-yard butterfly event. Congratulations, Daryl Wells. We'd also like to recognize their co our Daryl's coach, uh, Alex Trevino, who is here, coach. And uh, the assistant coach is Joe Alonso. If, if Daryl's parents are here and I know they are, can they please stand and be recognized? All right, and Daryl is just a junior, so he'll be back for his senior year. Good, congratulations, Daryl. Congratulations. 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 All right. Up next, we would like to recognize our West Laco High School varsity boys baseball team. Boys baseball team. How about a big hand as they enter the room? I thought it was just pitcher and catcher. All right, so we have the boys baseball team. We want to congratulate the West Laco High School varsity baseball team for their winning season. Congratulations, boys. The Panthers, Panthers finished the season with a 25 and five overall record, and they also won a share of the district championship. Congratulations. All right, team members are, as I say your name, can you please step forward to be recognized? Joey Garcia. We also have Jacob Cavazos, not present. Jaden Cavazos, Evan Margo, Evan, Rico Avila, Rico, Raúl Camarena, Brian Diaz, Brian. Uh -huh. Luis Longoria. Matt Calderon. John Castillo. Joseph Rivera. Elijah Estevanes. Elijah. Devin Hanks. Jason Gonzalez. Marco Leal, Marco. Matt Soto. Seth Sanchez. Axel Camarena. Angel Castellanos. And also Jaden Perez. I'd like to recognize their coaches, Homer Yanas. JJ Garcia and head coach Eri Serna. If their parents are here, parents, can you please stand and be recognized? Parents. Once again, congratulations to the West Local High School baseball team for winning a share of the district championship. Congratulations. Great season, boys. Congratulations, boys. Congratulations. 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 Got them all, Carlos? Got them all. I would like to congratulate all the all of the students that, that went by today, you know, came forward and received some um, acknowledgement for their uh, for their hard work. It takes a lot of hard work to, job, to participate in, in all these programs. And uh, our students not only were able to excel 
in, in the area, but they were also, many of them competed at the state level. They completely dedicated their, their hearts, their minds, and their soul to uh, the competitions, and then still kept, their, kept up their, their grades in school. So I want to congratulate them on behalf of the board and, and our superintendent, Dr. Canales, for a job well done. That job well done, all the students. So, we move on to item number three, and that is adjournment of this uh, committee meeting. Does anybody want to say so move? We have to. So move. All right. Time is 6.35, and this board committee meeting is over. Do we need a, a little two-minute recess, or are you guys ready to go? Ready? I'm gonna need a bottle of water. Two. I'll get it. I'll get it. The time is uh, 639. Today's day is May 14, 2018. I call this West Saco Independent School District Board of Trustees meeting to order. Item number two, establishment of a quor uh, quorum. Let the record reflect. We have a full quorum with the exception of uh, Dr. Rivera. Uh, Patrick just stepped out. First. Okay, he'll be right back. Item number three is opening prayer. Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, for invocation, we have Maria Yanez, science teacher from Dr. Armando Cuellar Middle School. I'm from Dr. Goya Middle School, and I'm a science teacher there. Uh, as you are, let us go ahead and go before the Lord in prayer to open our meeting this evening. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this afternoon. We thank you, first of all, for allowing us to be here and for everything you've done and all that you will do. Lord, we welcome you into this meeting, and we pray that you give our board members and all of our school leaders wisdom and guidance, my God, to do and take decisions, Father, that are going to lead our district into greater endeavors. Father, we just love you, and we are thankful for everything that you are doing, and we thank you for all of the accomplishments. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. Moving on to item number four, Pledge of Allegiance, Texas Pledge, Dr. Canales. Mr. Roblado, will you please introduce our students? Yes. If we could please have Nally Rodriguez and Victoria Sustaita please step forward to help us in the Pledge of Allegiance. You can just stand right here. All right. So Natalie is an eighth grade student at Dr. Armando Cuer Middle School and is the daughter of Viviana Rodriguez and Raul Rodriguez. Natalia is the way it's pronounced. Uh, is the president of the student council, treasurer for the National Junior Honor Society, choir representative, and a member of the superintendent's student advisory committee. She is also involved in cross country, basketball, and soccer. She practices a great deal of sharpening the saw by enjoying hobbies like playing fetch with her dogs, throwing passes with her brother, or off to a journey through literature. Natalia hopes to be accepted into Princeton University and to one day humbly hold the title of a doctor. How a big hand for Natalia Rodriguez for being here. <clears throat> we also have Victoria Sustaita, and she is also an eighth grade student at Dr. Armando Cuellar Middle School. She is the daughter of Jacqueline and Ricardo Sustaita. Victoria is involved in athletics and also in band, where she is first chair of her section. The band recently repeated the Sweepstakes Award. Aside from many extracurricular activities Victoria is involved with, she is also enrolled in English One and Geometry classes. One of Victoria's favorite hobbies is reading, and she is grateful that her school gives her plenty of time to read because Cuer is lit for literacy. In the future, she hopes to attend Duke University. How about a big hand for Victoria Sustaita? <laughs> All right, if everyone can please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, and the young ladies will lead us. Okay, ready? And I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. 
And now the Texas Pledge. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee. Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. All right. Thank you so much, ladies. Good job. Moving on to item number five, awards and recognitions. I know that uh, we just had a big presentation, an hour and a half, and uh, we started earlier in the day. We have a lot of students, principals, and teachers that need to get home due to the testing tomorrow, and uh, we tried to uh, give, get as much time, save as much time as we could so that we could go home early. So uh, not for the board, but for our teachers and students. So, um, but we do have some yet to do. So Dr. Canales, awards and recognitions. Board of Trustees, tonight we have an award for Wessical ISD, a national recognition as the best communities for music education from the NAM Foundation. So, Mr. Robledo, why don't yes, you tell us we, more? Uh, we have, we uh, recently were awarded the Best Communities in Music Education uh, designation from the NAM Foundation. We have always known that West Loco ISD is second to none, and we all have enjoyed the Mariachi, Wildcat uh, Regiment, the Panther Corps Bands, and they are the most recognizable members of our district's music program. These students have been developing their musical abilities since elementary uh, through middle school and high school under the guidance of devoted music teachers. So tonight we honor all of them with a special recognition. And we also have up here, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Mr. Bissett? Very quickly. Uh, the NAM Foundation designated our school district as a best community for music education for the year of 2018. There is an application process that you go through uh, that you tell the uh, NAM Foundation exactly what you offer for your music ed program for the school district. And when all is said and done, uh, I entered this back in December. We found out mid-April, I believe, that we were awarded this award. And it's an incredibly, I guess, prestigious award to be designated as. This uh, banner will be housed at the Performing Arts Center so that everyone that enters will see that West Local <coughs> ISD is second to none when it comes to music education. We're excited about this. I want to say thank you to Dr. Canales, Mr. Lopez, members of the board, for all of your support for not only music, but our entire fine arts program, as well as all of our music teachers from kindergarten through high school. It's a team effort that got us this award, and it's a team effort that will continue to bring in accolades like this to our district. And I just want to say thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> A couple of other things. We had our UIL meeting this past Saturday, and I know word gets around really quick, but I want to make it official. Pigskin is coming to Westlaco. Right. So, uh, it will be on October 20th at Bobby Lackey Stadium. We are excited to be hosting this event. We will also be hosting the TMEA All Region Orchestra, as well as the TMEA All Region Mariachi again this year. So awesome. Westlaco is the place to be. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Bissett. Well, that's some good news, uh, Pigskin coming to Westlaco, not only for our district, but uh, for the community. You know, uh, I'm sure we can, we can all uh, 
visualize the, the business impact for our local restaurants and, and possibly some of our hotels that are here in Wessico and, uh, and the boost that'll do, little boost, mini boost that'll do to our economy. Thank you so much and for all the hard work that uh, Mr. Bissett that you've done on that project. Moving on to item number six is a proclamation of National School Nurses Day, May 16, 2018, Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, uh, nurses play an important role in our schools. They clear the aisles for students, for staff, to make sure that we're all well, not only physically, but mentally, a lot of the times. So we have a proclamation for nurses in honor of our, all the great nurses in our school district, and we have several here this evening. So, Mr. Obledo, will you read the proclamation? Okay, if our nurses are here, can they please stand and be recognized? Nurses, as I read this proclamation. Okay, whereas West Laco ISD youth are a treasured national resource whose health, education, and well-being are interrelated, vital concerns of family and school personnel and community members, and whereas professional school nurses strengthen and facilitate the educational process by improving and protecting the health status of children and youth, whereas the major focus of school nursing services in the prevention of illnesses and disabilities and the early detection and correlation of health problems within the school and community. Therefore, Erasmo Lopez, president of the Westlaco ISD Board of Trustees does hereby and proclaim school nurse recognition. Congratulations. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you for all your work. Okay, we've got two, a couple of more to do here. Um, Item number seven is uh, teachers. We have, we have two more proclamations, yes. Proclamation whichever one you want. Teacher. All right, teachers, do we have any teachers that are here today? Teachers, can you please stand and be recognized? They're star testing tomorrow. Star they're testing. star <laughs> testing, okay. So we're gonna well, read this not. proclamation their in their honor. <laughs> and most, almost everybody here was a teacher at one time. So whereas a strong and effective system of free public school education for all children and youth is essential to our democratic Sorry. system of government, and whereas the United States has been made considerable progress in the social, technological, and science, scientific fields due to our system of free and universal public education, and whereas much of the progress can be attributed to the qualified and dedicated teachers entrusted with their educational development for our children to their full potential, therefore, Erasmo Lopez, president of the West Laco Independent School District Board of Trustees, does hereby proclaim teacher appreciation. Congratulations. Well, we our teachers are, are at home getting ready for tomorrow and the testing and, and all the hard work they have and all the hard work they've done all school year. So thank you all so much for, for all they do. Where, where would we be without our teachers? You know, there's not enough that can be said about them. Thank you so much. Moving on to item number eight, Proclamation for Better Speech and Hearing Month, May 2018. All, all right. right. Another proclamation here. Okay. So be it resolved that the month of May be proclaimed Better Hearing and Speech Month, and we encourage all citizens to recognize the achievement of our professionals in improving the quality of life for people with communication disorders. We salute the speech language and pathologists and speech therapists who work tirelessly to bring better hearing and speech to the one in 10 families who are affected by communication disorders. Therefore, Erasmo Lopez, president of the WISD Board of Trustees, does hear does hereby proclaim May 2018 as Better Hearing and Speech Month. And if we do have any speech uh, pathologist here, can they please stand and be recognized? Aww. Thank you very much. Thank you all so much for all your hard work also. Item number uh, Number nine, public comments. We had uh, one person that signed up, uh, Lauro Garza. Lauro, before you uh, start, I need to read something to you. Yes, sir. You are to address only matters that concern the school district. You are not to attack any district employee or board member. We will not tolerate any disruptive behavior by any member of the audience. 
If you do not abide, you will be directed to cease and leave the meeting. You're, you're, you'll start with your name and your address, and then also you're going to have five minutes. No problem. Uh, my name is uh, Laura Garza. I'm the area director for Special Olympics uh, Texas here in the Rio Grande Valley. And uh, <clears throat> well, my address is not in Westlake, it's in, it's in, or I was in Mission. Uh, but uh, I'm here uh, to give thanks to, uh, to Westlake YSD uh, for our, this year was our sixth annual uh, spring games, or track and field, uh, for those that don't, uh, that don't know, uh, here in uh, Westlake YSD at Bobby Leggett Stadium. And it would not be possible for, uh, for all the many, many people involved uh, to begin with, of course, uh, with all of you board members for allowing us to have this event here. Uh, of course, uh, Dr. Canales for, uh, for continuing her support of this event. Uh, we also like to thank the maintenance, construction, the security, and the nursing staff uh, that are hopefully are, are still here. Uh, they left uh, for, uh, for all their hard work. I uh, would also like to thank Neil Garza and the entire special ed staff for their great work and their coordination, uh, as well as A.D. Oscar Driojas. There you go. And uh, <clears throat> this event is, uh, as you saw the athletes before uh, that you recognized uh, earlier, uh, without this event, they wouldn't have the opportunity to prove their abilities, to show what they can do to every, uh, to every one of us. And, and it cannot, like I said, it cannot be possible without the support and the, the continued opportunity for, from, from you guys and from, from the entire Westlake ISD staff. Uh, we, we are extremely happy with the facilities. Everybody from every school district that comes here, they, they love the facilities here. And uh, we, of course, enjoy them uh, <clears throat> very well, and they, and they make things very easy for us. And uh, I cannot thank the board, uh, Neil. Uh, I saw George, there we go. Uh, barely, barely saw you, man. Uh, George Lopez, and uh, of course, Oscar, and uh, the nursing staff, and everyone who is a part of this big event. We have 1,300 athletes who participate in it. We are the, one of the largest in Texas. Ours is larger than Houston's, or Austin's, San Antonio's. So we thank you very, uh, on behalf of Special Olympics and the 4,000 athletes that participate with Special Olympics, thank you so much. And thank you, Wesley Guayeste. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Garza. Moving on to item number, number 10, superintendent's report, Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, we do have six different reports as have been requested. Um, by our board president and others. Uh, a couple of them we do every single month, so we will begin. The first one is autism awareness, Mr. Neil Garza. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'd just like to, to start. Um, April was autism awareness month, and just wanted to talk about not just the things that we did during that month, but the things that we do every day to support our families and our students. And we'll start off just saying the, the purpose of the Autism Awareness Month, as is the name implies, to bring awareness. Um, approximately 170 WISD students are identified with autism. Um, and there are several things that we did specific this month, and then we'll get to the things that we do every single day uh, to raise awareness. Uh, our d department, some members of the department designed some t-shirts um, and we gave some away and, and we sold some to try to raise money uh, in order to support the annual autism awareness uh, festival that we have. Uh, we had ribbons as well. I, I believe we gave some of those to you gentlemen. And this was the 18th annual autism celebration. We're proud of it. Uh, we, we had our humble beginnings. Uh, we, we've had it at various places, uh, different cafeterias, uh, Mary Hogue some years, uh, Rico. And the last couple of years, we've had it at the Kate Early College High School Pavilion. Um, and moving right along, it's, this just shows the, the festivities. Basically, we had informational booths, we had free food, uh, we had games and various activities. And the next pictures just take you through some of the events we had. It was on April 20th from 5.30 to 7.30. Um, and there we see we, we, we had a train that was quite popular. And uh, you see whoever was driving it doesn't seem to quite fit in there. That, that, that wasn't me. 
<laughs> and, and the kids, you'll more picture of the kids enjoying the activities. And one of the things, one of the neat things since 2016, and we want to thank our partners uh, with the city, uh, where they've lit up the, the Tinaco blue, and blue is the traditional color that's associated with autism awareness. And I don't know if anybody noticed that during the evenings or early morning hours throughout the month of April. And again, I'd be remiss if we just focused on the month of April because there's supports that our staff uh, provide that I think it's second to none with respect to our counselors, our LSSPs, and our teachers. And there you have listed uh, parent training, in-home training, uh, classroom teacher consultation, social skills counseling, autism team evaluation, picture exchange communication system support for the kids who may need a little more support with their communication, social stories, uh, public service announcement on K-West during the months of April. Um, and these are just some of the products that we provide and it doesn't mean every kid needs this because when you look at students with autism, if you know one, you only know one. They all have different, they need different levels of support. Some are completely uh, out in the mainstream. Others need more support. So for some of our students that need a little more support, uh, we have a picture of a, a picture schedule uh, at the bottom. Uh, you have a task analysis where it breaks down the, the task for the student. Uh, there's a workstation there you see in the middle of that slide. And then off to the right, it's a social story. And that's uh, what's utilized to teach the students some social skills who may need that. And I'll just close by saying uh, a thank you to Dr. Canales and the board for, for your continued support. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Neil. Neil. Just want you to know that uh, our superintendent, this board, is totally committed to special children and, and their needs and, and all the programs that you support and, and you, you work with. I recognize and, that I'm thankful for that. And, and make sure that anything that you need, that you come before us so that we can take care of it for our kids. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. For the next section of our report, we have summer programs. We're happy that this summer we will be providing a complete uh, educational summer program that includes enrichments. We have Ms. Norma Brewer who will lead us through this part of the report. Oh, and Coach Riojas and Mrs. Reyes, I think. Okay. Good evening. We have some information here on the summer programs that we have available. We have a lot of great programs and opportunities for our students here at Westlake ISD. We have um, eight campuses that are hosting our summer school programs for our remediation programs and also our programs for enrichment. We have uh, new programs this year where we're going to provide enrichment opportunities for our students. Those are students that do not need to attend summer school, but are coming in for dance, for theater arts, and programs such as those. Our summer school programs are mostly starting June 5th, and the end date for the majority of the programs is on the 28th, with the exception of a couple of programs that will go into the month of July, July 12th. Good evening. Um, our ACE pro this is our second year of our ACE program, and we will be servicing kinder through fifth grade. And we are a six-week program. Um, we begin June 4th and end July 12th. We're Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. And we are uh, implementing uh, our MindWorks curriculum, which covers is all hands-on activities, project-based learning. Um, all core subject areas are covered, is, including fine arts. And um, we're going to continue throughout the summer our soccer program that we've had all year. Um, that we've had the Plaza Sports Center come in and um, teach soccer to our students, so we'll be doing that in the summer as well. And of course, our wonderful dance program, we're gonna be offering dance as well during our summer, and we have plenty of field trips. Um, we wanna expose our students to different things and new opportunities, and so we'll be uh, attending UTRGV, STC, the IMS Museum in McAllen, um, the South Texas Museum in Edinburgh, Estero Llano Grande State Park, uh, UTRGV Coastal Studies Lab at South Padre, and of course our Plaza Sports Center in FAR. Quest uh, question. Yes, sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, okay. A couple questions yes. would be, uh, what are the, it's, it's K through 5th on those programs? K through 5th grade, yes. And is it open just to Wasico ISD students or to any student in the These are community? students that have been currently enrolled in our ACE program. Okay. And so we are going based on um, a high attendance rate throughout the school year for the ACE program. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Same question. And we have a maximum of 200 students this summer. 
All right. And for our regular summer school program, they are four students that attend Westlaco ISD this semester. So they have to be enrolled at Westlaco ISD for our um, acceleration program and for our enrichment program. Yes. For last. Now we're going to talk about the recreation Best program. for last. Okay. okay. Good evening, uh, Dr. Canales, Mr. Lopez, and, and members of the board. Uh, we are in our 12th year of the summer recreation program, so thank you very much for your support of our program. We're very, very proud of our program as it provides a lot of wonderful opportunities for our kids throughout the summer. Um, this is not summer strength and conditioning. This is summer recreation program, so we open it up to, to different age groups. So we offer programs such as golf. Uh, the open weight room, the open gym, the learn to swim, very, very popular. Uh, Ultimate Frisbee, which is a, a new program that we brought last year to the summer recreation program. We have tennis and we also, also, we also have summer uh, TAF track. Um, these programs are for West Lico ISD students primarily. Uh, we do have a lot of questions throughout uh, from, from kids that live in West Lico ISD but do not attend our schools. Uh, we do allow them but they do come in uh, they're pretty much on a waiting list, and there is a little bit different fee on the one for the programs where we do have fees. But so, throughout the summer, we service close to 2,500 kiddos at West Go ISD. So I think that's a, that's a tremendous honor, and I thank you guys um, for your support of, of these programs. They're very, very beneficial to our kids. Mr. Rojas, are these yes. programs mostly in the morning, or it's a combination of morning and afternoon? It's a combination of morning and afternoon. Uh, pretty much. Our open gym, open weight room is, we try to keep it open from eight to four all day long. There's a lot of the kiddos, they like to eat lunch in the cafeteria and then come back. Uh, the gym, same thing. Uh, we have a lot of kids at the gymnasiums. Uh, they just come in, you know, they play, they play just about anything, basketball, volleyball, even soccer sometimes. Um, they learn to swim, those are hourly, so you, you have to register right. for hour sessions. Uh, the tennis program, we have a morning and an afternoon session. Uh, and the track program is an afternoon session workout program, but Friday is all day event. So it's just like a track meet, so. And um, most of the coaches are the ones that are providing supervision and right. yes, skills. Sir. Yes, sir. And part of, uh, part of what we do is, is our programs are supervised and coached by our, our own West Coast ISD coaches. And we also hire some college tutors, some students right. that uh, they come back and um, you know, we, they're going to school, they're going to college, they extra extra money. We hire them for that purpose as well. And finally, um, I just wanted to share that we, um, off, we're going to be servicing over 7,700 students this summer. We have very good programs for our students. Most of these programs are funded through different types of funds, but primarily uh, state compensatory funding. We, uh, we offer uh, great opportunities for our students. We're anticipating a large group and um, very, very successful programs taught by our very, very successful teachers. Good. I heard a lot of good things about our program last year, and uh, is there any additions or anything that y'all are doing different this year? The only one is the um, addition would be the Fine Arts and um, Technology Institute, whereas before we used to have robotics, standalone robotics, a STEAM program. Hmm. This year we have incorporated Fine Arts, and it's going to be an Institute of Fine Arts and um, Fine Arts and Technology Institute. We are going to be servicing kinder, first and second graders in our elementary schools and third, fourth, and fifth graders at Central Middle Schools. Um, we're anticipating a large group of students there, about 600 students. Okay. And word is getting out to all our students that are eligible? Yes. We are uh, recruiting students from all over the district. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you, Mrs. Burr. Thank you. Board of Trustees, for the next one, we have some preliminary, I'm going to stress preliminary, star scores for fifth and eighth grade for our district. We have Mr. Aguilar and Mrs. Peterson who will present this part. Uh, good evening, Dr. Canales, uh, Mr. Lopez, members of the board. As Dr. Canales mentioned, you know, these are preliminary reports that we did receive with our first round of administration. Uh, this past April, uh, we will, as you as you know, today uh, we are in the second round of administration with our third and fourth graders, middle school, secondary, also uh, continuing with their assessments. As you see before you, this is a 2018 star <coughs> reading fifth grade, and you have those three categories right there, which are performance indicators. If you can see to your left, you have your approaches, and you have all the campuses with their scores from last year to this year, and of course the gain where they're at. 
So I uh, just want to point out a few where we're looking at right now. Uh, for example, you're going to have some campuses that may already have a high, so sometimes their, may, their gains may be minimal, and you have some that's shown the significant growth. Do want to point out, uh, you have Madrivara with a 25% growth in approaches. Uh, short, right after that, you had Kleckler Hill with 15% growth, and as you can see, the campuses are there. Uh, they, they look very good with their numbers and the approaches. Moving on to the meet, same thing. Uh, one of the ones we're highlighting right there, you're looking at 32% with Rico Elementary, very strong growth. You see pretty much all of them in double digits moving up with the, uh, and also moving into the masters. If you're looking at those, you have also Rico and Elementary with a 28% growth and you see some of the good numbers there. If we then, move on to the next just, slide. Mr. Aguilar, just to add for the reading, um, when we compare to Region 1, of course, it's preliminary. We're right at where Region 1 is. So it's a great gain by our great. campuses. Very great job, principals and teachers. Very, very great job. Um, if you can see if it continues indicative, Region 1 tends to be slightly higher than the state. So hopefully the trend continues as we continue with these assessments. And we're very optimistic with everyone's hard work as, as we move along. So we're going to jump into the next slide. Mr. Aguilar. Yes, sir. Uh, can I take the time to come in? Uh, Dr. Canales and, of course, your cabinet is for doing an excellent job, uh, especially in the area of masters. When you get double digits, plus the principals, because they do an outstanding job, but also the teachers that teach STAR. You know, they have, they have to work hard every day. But you see the scores, uh, principals, uh, Dr. Canales, uh, they did an outstanding job, on, especially in the masters area. Did the accountability you, criteria remain the same, or was it altered from last year? Uh, you're looking at some. Uh, for masters, it remained the same. There is a, it's proposed right now, so it will not be finalized probably by the end of May and June. So if you're looking at approaches, it was about 3 percentage less. Same thing in meets. It dropped about 3 percentage points less. So that hasn't been finalized. So I'm assuming probably around June, mid-June, late June, it'll be finalized. Okay, so the standard for passing was lowered by the state? The standard was, pa the, it was it's proposed right now, three percentage points in approaches. Okay, I see. And three percentage points less in meets. Okay, so the, stan so the numbers we're looking at right now are on the proposed changes or the, un or the current? Proposed. Okay. Proposed. Okay. Okay, thanks. So we look on to the next slide. If we're, I'm sorry, when I? Far ahead. We're looking on the next slide with the mathematics. Same thing, what you're seeing there with the approaches, the meets, and the masters. And you see the 2017, 2018, of course, the gains. Uh, if you're looking at some of those there, you look at Silver Elementary with a 19%. In the approaches, in the meets, you saw a very significant jump with Marivara Elementary at 24 points, and you had several of them in the 20s as well. And if you're looking at the masters, 22% uh, with Rico Elementary, and of course you saw several gains there uh, moving forward. And uh, of course with the region, uh, we're showing a, a slight increase of 6% there. And I do want to echo what Mr. Nieto said, you know, I want to thank the principals and their staff for their leadership on the campus. They've done a tremendous job uh, working very hard with their students uh, and their staff, making sure that our boys and girls are working very hard. And like I mentioned earlier, we're very optimistic with our third and fourth grade uh, coming up in the elementary. Okay. Yeah, for the middle schools, the grade level that we have data on is our 8th grade. So you can see that overall the district had a 3% gain, gain on 8th grade. Um, B. Garza had a 9% gain in the approaches. And the Meet Central Middle School had a 5% gain and also an 8% gain on Masters. And we are running slightly behind the region at this point. But the group that is not here are 243 English 1 students. Um, those are our advanced eighth graders that took the English one test. We're one of the few districts in the valley to offer English one. So when their scores come in in June, they will be added to the eighth grade scores. So that's a significant group that's missing. So without that, uh, there were still gains in many places. Well, and that's because probably them are a lot of a high achieving students. You English have to one. be a high achieving student to get into English one in eighth grade. Yeah, so yes, that's definitely. I, I think we can definitely expect mm -hmm. the boost in the scores. Yeah, that's excellent. definitely. And in math, uh, the group that's not here is Algebra 1. So even without the Algebra 1 students, and there are 343 Algebra 1 students in 7th and 8th grade. The majority of them are in 8th grade, though. So even without that group, we see a 5% gain overall for the district. 
running ahead of the region, and we uh, have been running ahead of the region in math and many. We also had a 10% gain in meets and a 3% gain in masters. I want to recognize um, Scarza Middle School again in math had a 9% increase on approaches, but if you look at the gain in meets, um, we did really well there with Mary Hogue and B. Garza and Central all coming in in double digit gains. And then in the masters, we have Mary Hogue with an 11% gain. So overall gains in both of those areas also. So we're pushing our principals not to just meet the approaches, but really to reach higher because we know our students need to be meeting meets and masters to be college ready. Good. And we will get final scores later this summer. And you said that the like the ones taking algebra one are not. They're not here part yet of because they uh, took their test uh, this week and last week. Last week, actually, That's last right. week. So we will have their scores in June, and then they will go into the numbers here. Again, Dr. Canales, great job to uh, especially the eighth grade math teachers. You know, without even the algebra one, uh, outstanding uh, scores, especially in the master's level. Yes. Thank you. For our next one, student enrollment. Uh, compared to this time last year, we're up by 78 students. Uh, and you can see the breakdown by, on the next slide, by campus level. We're still down elementary by 214. High schools by 91. Middle schools are staying with being, uh, having more <coughs> students enrolled than last year. Our ADA, on the next slide, remains as a district at 95.94%. At this time last year, we were at 96.07. The previous year, we're at 95.69. So uh, we're, we'll look at where we end up at the end of the year. Of course, we just have a few more uh, days of school before the end of the year. And then for the ADA, nothing's changed that we reported last month. It's, we're still 265 below for ADA. And that's approximately $1.9 million, a little bit more than that. So we're watching that very carefully, and we'll use that information as we move forward and budget and plan for next year. Andres, you, I know yes, we've sir. talked about the shortfall uh, in previous meetings, uh -huh. and uh, you have told us about it being covered. <coughs> so um, are you still of that, of that thought that we're gonna, everything's okay uh, moving forward? Yes. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Because, and Dr. Canales, because the loss of the students, we're also, uh, I guess we're not going to fill some of the teachers' vacancies because depending on the number of students we we have uh, for this coming year, correct? Right. We'll be, we'll be monitoring, and when we have the open enrollment, the open enrollment, um, the <coughs> district transfers from one school to another, and working closely with HR and our principals and our two assistant soups and making those determinations. But we're going to look at everything very carefully. Okay. Okay. For our next report, we have uh, insurance in a newsletter. Good evening, Dr. Canales, Mr. President, members of the board. Uh, this is the standard uh, insurance slide that I show that I present every month, uh, broken down this year versus last year. And medical claims, uh, this, and I'm going to approximate these numbers so to move along a little quicker. And medical claims, uh, we spent approximately $7.9 million in medical claims last year uh, versus this year, approximately $6.5 million in claims. Uh, that's a difference of about 1.4 uh, million uh, less that we spent on medical claims. Uh, prescription drug benefit, uh, $2.2 million uh, this time last year uh, versus this year, again, $2.2 million. It's a difference of approximately uh, $48,000, so that's almost flat line. Uh, our fixed costs, which is, of course, our administrative fees, our um, stop-loss premiums, last year at this time, $1.9 million to date. Uh, now we're at 2.2 million, so it's a difference of a, an increase of approximately $300,000. So overall, uh, we spent just a little over $12 million last year. Uh, right now, we're just a little under $11 million this year at 10.9. So the difference of approximately 1.1 million less that we spent this year versus last year at this time. Um, and what do you attribute that to, Mr. The, the, Prelimin the savings. Pre preliminary analysis is that um, this this year we've had approximately 10 people that were over $50,000 in claims. 
Uh, last year, we had about that many that had, was over the specific deductible. So I think a preliminary, preliminary analysis shows that we have a lot healthier of a population now than we did last year. And that's, that's good, people get off the plan or they retire or, you know, so they're no longer on our, our plan, so. Mike, what are fixed costs again? Fixed costs are the admin fees that we pay Blue Cross to manage our plan and the stop loss premiums that we pay to our stop loss carrier. And your newsletter. Excuse okay. me? Because your newsletter is helping too. I'm sorry? <laughs> your With the wellness. Is helping. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Um, and uh, this is the uh, self-funded workers' compensation program. This is just incurred, uh, which means that it's uh, reported. We have to keep this money in reserve, so this, this number always fluctuates. Uh, so as you can tell by the bar graph, uh, we're doing very well uh, on our workers' comp program. Uh, the difference in the two years, Marcel, is that's, like I mentioned, that's when we initiated our 504 comp program. Um, I do have some further information on the uh, pharmacy benefit management program. Um, that item, is, there was an item later on in the agenda to discuss that. Every time I come up and present, we always, I just show numbers, 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 numbers. Um, so I do have some, <clears throat> Ms. Rebecca Gaffey from American Healthcare, she does have a couple slides to present to you just to kind of get a little bit into the meat of the plan and, and what the challenges we're facing. Um, Ms. Rebecca, are you here? Yeah, right here. Good evening, I'm Rebecca Gaffey with American Healthcare and I am a strategic account executive. And with me, I have <coughs> Melissa Jacobson, who's the National Director of Client Services. Hello. Hi. So um, on September 1st, West Laco partnered with American Healthcare to begin a very successful partnership for their pharmacy benefits. Um, we base this on a pass-through contract. And so how a pass-through contract works is that the client pays exactly what the pharmacy is paid when they adjudicate a claim. So it's completely transparent so you know exactly how much you're spending on um, medications. Um, with a pass-through contract, there is an administrative fee and that fee for West Laco is $199 per claim. Um, so your drug performance. Um, excluding specialty, the total plan cost was just over $1,010,000 for the first six months of the plan. Um, for the specialty plan cost, it was $526,000 and accounted for 34% of the drug spend. So you can see that the specialty um, medications are leading the, um, the majority of the plan cost. Um, here in our presentation, we've included some of the high cost drivers. Um, these are cancer medications and some of the higher cost specialty medications that are driving the plan. Um, for the sake of time, we'll, we won't go through them um, individually. One thing to note on these specialty drugs too is they do all have a prior authorization <coughs> requirement on them. These are high cost medications, often requiring special handling, um, special storage instructions. Um, so they are tracked and monitored by our clinical pharmacist team um, in conjunction with the prescribing doctor. Um, next, we have spe several um, non-specialty medications that are also driving the plan cost. Um, so the top plan cost driver um, was the anti-diabetic medications. Anti-diabetic medications actually made up just over 45% of the total plan cost excluding specialty. Um, so another, it's a, it's a, it's a big thing, the anti-diabetic medications. Um, another non-specialty cost driver was actually Tamiflu. Because of the severe flu season this year, um, the cost went up. There were just so many medications um, distributed. There were about 372 prescriptions. Um, here we've included a lot of the high cost diabetic medications. Again, most of these medications also require a prior authorization and they're monit monitored closely by our clinical team to make sure that they're um, being used appropriately. So one of the reasons we do see the diabetic meds pop up um, with that high cost is unlike a lot of the other drug groups, within the diabetic category, there's very few generics available. The majority of the meds available are brand only, so that limits some lower cost alternatives um, for patients. Um, 
Um, so the drug performance continued as we just talked about. The anti-diabetic category um, is um, the leading is the leading um, category for drug spend. Um, there were 14 of the anti-diabetic medications were on the top 30 drug list. Uh, the anti-diabetic category had a total plan cost of $456,755, and that represents just over 45% of the total plan cost, excluding specialty. Um, we do have one recommendation, and that would be for West Laco to consider um, implementing the po comprehensive population <coughs> health management program that American Healthcare does offer. Um, it could help offset costs for this national trend. Um, the Population Health Management Program focuses on diabetes and the comorbidities that go along with diabetes, which are high blood pressure and high cholesterol. Um, it helps members take a more active role in their life um, and their health and their um, how they can improve their overall health. Um, the health management program also considers medical and pharmacy costs as a whole and helps to <coughs> reduce overall costs um, combined. Um, the second ranked top drug group was the adjunct intineoplastics and adjunctive therapies, and these medications are used typically to treat um, cancer, and they're um, primarily specialty drugs as well. Um, so here we just have a graph of the top 10 drug groups. Um, we won't go into them in detail. Um, the ones that we touched on are probably the most important. The next item is regarding brand and generic utilization. So during the last six months, West Laco's generic dispense rate was just over 87%. Um, the like entity comparison uh, for this generic dispense rate is about 86.63%. So West Laco is um, doing well. They're above average. Um, the average generic utilization when a generic drug is available was almost 99%. So West Laco incentivizes members to use a generic over a brand medication with a lower copay when a generic is available, and then also by applying a penalty when a member chooses a brand over a generic drug. Um, then our next slide is just the top pharmaceuticals by plan cost. So most of these medications are the diabetic medications or the specialty medications. So we just wanted to give you a visual of where that data was coming from. <coughs> and then the next slide is about cost control. So American Healthcare um, incorporates clinical strategies and best, best practices. We do prior authorizations, um, step therapies, drug utilization, formulary management, and clinical interventions. So when a prior authorization is reviewed, it goes to our clinical team. We have clinical pharmacists on site that review these prior authorizations. We want to make sure that medications are safe, efficacious, um, and that it's also the best cost, the, mo the most cost effective for not only the plan, but for the plan participants as well. Um, so we do have a diagram of kind of how the PA process works. Um, so we receive a call from the pharmacy, the member, um, sometimes the doctor's office, sometimes the participant will call themselves. Um, we go ahead and start that prior authorization with our member services team. Um, when the PA gets back to our team, we complete it within 72 hours, and then upon approval, we contact the participant and the pharmacy and let them know that the drug can be reprocessed. Um, if we do not receive a response from the physician, then the um, prior authorization is closed due to no response, but it can be reopened at any time if we receive a call and they um, need further assistance. And do you have any questions about our pharmacy benefits? I had a question. On your prior authorization, do you yes. all have a, uh, a method to do it electronically? Is that uh, something that's available, or is it? Uh... Yes, we do receive. We're in the process of updating our system, and one of the features that will be rolled out here shortly is the electronic PAs. And so that process, when it's available, will be communicated out to the physicians. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a provider, and so I, you know, that's one of the steps that I know it's been a concern, you know, the, the process and the actual you know, 
having to have staff member get on the phone and call and and it, it's it, it's time consuming uh, on the provider side, but also for the patient. You know, it takes uh, time, and, and by the time a provider might get around to it, you know, there might be days and, and sometimes maybe a week or so before you know something is is uh, approved. So you know that would be you know great if it, you know, something like that were to uh, improve you know that with the e-filing. On that. <clears throat> yes. Um, we know the convenience that that will bring to a lot of the physicians that we work with and our membership. So we do expect that within the next couple months. Now, who makes the decision as to what's covered and, and, and not covered? What is that? Since we're self-funded, is that, you know, is that coming from the pharmacy benefit? Is that coming from us? You know, what, what is that? So ultimately, being a self-funded plan, the district has the ability to Can say you get near yes the or no. Microphone, please? Get a little bit closer to the oh, microphone. Yeah. So, being a self-funded plan, the district has the ability to say yes or no. Ultimately, um, one of the services that we provide the district is a group of pharmacists. We have a P and T committee, um, pharmacy and therapeutics, that meet quarterly, and they review all the drugs, the new drugs to the market new generics that have come out, um, typically they'll go through a drug class review every quarter as well, and they'll make recommendations for the formulary. We do maintain a standard formulary. A lot of our clients do choose to use that, um, but again, not every client's the same, so we have the ability to allow our clients to customize it based on their demographic. So our team, Rebecca and our pharmacist, will come out here quarterly. Mm -hmm. Okay. They come out quarterly and, and they meet with the team here with those recommendations um, to go ahead and, and implement them. And I know the, the nature of pharmacy nowadays, I know it's, you know, it, it's, it's the whole pharmacy world has changed in, in that a lot of times, you know, you write a script and it's not approved and you got to follow the process. And, but I think there's a fine line also where, you know, we, we have to you know, speed up that process a little bit and, and you know, think about the patient and, and make sure that uh, they, they get what they need, you know, as soon as possible there. Thank you. Other than your $1.99 admin fee, is there any other fees associated with this <coughs> if for prescription costs? Oh, um, yes, um, the cost for prior authorizations. What is that? Don't Honestly, I'm not sure. I would have to look at the contract, but I'd be happy to provide that to Michael, and um, he can follow up with you if that's okay. Uh, I haven't uh, broken it down. I've included it in past updates. So okay. you have to provide it with this information. I can send out it again if, if you all need to. Please, Mike, if you don't, if you don't mind. Mike, real quick, how, how, do, how are rebates handled? How, how does that work? What's that process? All the rebates come back to the district. You have, a, you have some type of report for that, for rebates? I think we just got our first quarter. Uh, yes, we just recently got um, uh, our rebates for the first quarter of the plan year. So uh, we do have that. I can share it with the board as well. Is this our first year with American Health? This is our first year, right? yes, sir. Okay. Six months into it. Six months. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, you mentioned the PHM program. Uh, but how does that help our staff members? Um, so the population health management, oh, sorry. So the Population Health Management Program, um, we are not a cookie cutter program. What we do is we provide support to participants who've been diagnosed with um, a disease state such as high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes. Um, and so we set them up with a care manager and they have a monthly care call. And so they go over their um, eating habits and all different things that play a role in their lifestyle. We also help to make sure that members are taking their medications appropriately um, and a, a big thing about having diabetes or um, another disease such as um, high blood pressure or high cholesterol is that members um, need assistance sometimes managing their condition and making sure that they stay on track and it helps to prevent people from going into the ER or having other um, life-threatening events happen um, when you can manage their chronic condition. In short, Mr. Nieto, it's uh, an enhanced case management uh, program, so we'll, we can look at that later, you know, later on. So it's not something that we're considering. That's not something that we're considering right now, but right. something we can look at in the future. 
So how long have you all been our pharmaceutical benefits Six company? Months. They started September 1st, uh, Mr. Lopez. <coughs> first time you all are here, right? Yes, it's the first time we've been um, at a board meeting. Okay. And, and your normal visits would be how often? Or to speak to the board? We uh, normally we um, have the different providers come in once a year. So you know, in a few months, once we have more data, we'll have the TPA come in and present, and then we'll have the work comp uh, company come present. So we just try to spread it out throughout the year. But they meet with me once a quarter. They come down. Any other questions? No. Okay. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We do have, I believe, a copy of the newsletter. Uh, sorry. Yes. You have it. You have, they yes. have it. They have it. Y'all got, got the copy. Yeah, we have it, and, and we can we can look at it, and yeah. so we okay. can move on and get our principals home. So now we have the construction update. So we have Mr. Sanchez and Mr. Garza. Yes. Dr. Canales, Mr. Lopez, members of the board. This is an update on our facilities, facilities project that we have. Uh, the first uh, four projects I'm going to mention have been completed, and they are the West Oco High School Transition Center Sidewalk Improvements, uh, Electrical Upgrades at Margo Elementary, and uh, Tile Replacement at five schools, and the resurfacing of uh, turf and the running track at Lucky Stadium. Do we have uh, any more schools that we have to do tiling for this summer? No. No. We're, 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 okay. We're the next one? On the, the next slide, slide five, is for the fencing project for seven schools. We're almost done with this project. The last project we need to do, finish the aquatic center. There was a delay that we had mentioned before with the a line, size of the property, the lines. We finalized that. They should be finishing that in the next two to three weeks. The next slide is the roofing project. Improvements at four campuses, at Airport Elementary, Choir Middle School, GM and Band Hall, Beatriz Garza Middle School, GM and Band Hall, and Westaco High School, all Band Hall. This project started, uh, this one got delayed. We had some uh, delays uh, processing contracts and a couple other items that we had. But they got it started going. The Airport Elementary project is supposed to finish September 28th, Garza Middle School, August 29th, Choir Middle School, August 15th, and the West High School Odd Band Hall, July 16. The next item is the <coughs> tennis course lighting project at both high schools. This project started and should be completed uh, mid to late uh, October 2018. And on that one, the tennis course, sorry, at high school we we're adding five lights because only five of the ten courts had it. We're replacing all of them. And at the West Echo East, all the eight courts didn't have lights, so we're going to put new lights there. The next slide eight, West Coast High School Fuel House. The project has started as well. It's supposed to be completed in January 2019. Slide nine, the new security and fire alarm systems at West Coast High School and the fire alarm system of central office administration offices. This one's supposed to be finished in November 2018. This one will start at the end of the school year because of uh, the schools to, we're gonna wait till school's end. So the last week of May, we'll get started at the high school. West Coast High School Band Hall, slide 10. This project is coming to the board for approval or ranking of proposals on the June 11 meeting and is expected to be completed on December 2018. Slide 11, security access control for all the elementary schools. This project is coming to the board for approval or ranking also on June 11 and is expected to be completed at the end of October 2018. So we're not doing secondary yet, correct? No, just elementary schools now. Okay. Okay, that, that will be the secondary school. Okay. Slide 12, athletic facility renovation at West Echo East High School and West Echo High School. That one, the approval of the ranking was bringing it to the board next week at a special board meeting on May 21st. That was supposed to expect it to be finished both high schools on May 2019. We're going to start with West Echo East first, and then we'll go to West Echo High School. Slide 13, the CTE Advanced Manufacturing Technology Shop. Improvements, this one's expected to be finished to the middle of September 2018. 
welding and woodworking facility at the Peter Abrigo Ag Farm is expected to be completed as well by the middle of September 2018. Slide 15, digital billboard. That one, uh, we're working on it. We haven't finalized the specs on it. We expect to have it ready by October 2018, if not a month later. Digital billboard. And then the HVC replacement project for Silva, Gonzalez, and Kate. That, that one, we just finished uh, negotiating the contract with the contractor. Supposed to be finished by mid-August 2018. Slide 16, uh, parking lot improvements, uh, district-wide. On this one, we're working with the city of Westaco. The completions, uh, we don't know the dates exactly because <coughs> we're waiting on the city of Westaco to help us with the, uh, the projects come up and that they're able to do it. They'll be working this summer and next year. Slide 17, the pavilions for Quayer Middle School and Mary Hogg Middle School. That one's expected to be completed. The entire project, including Central, by November 2018, we expect that the pavilion will be ready by the end of September. Slide 18 is Central Middle School, canopy connecting the science wing to the main building and adding restrooms to the science wing. This one's expected to be completed in November 2018. Slide 19, the chemical storage building at the Aquatic Center. This one's expected to be completed at the end of October 2018. Slide 20, parking lot additions at Silva and Gonzalez Elementary. This one's expected to be completed at the middle of September 2018. Slide 21, canopy installations at four schools. This one has already started, it's almost done, should be finished by the end of June this summer. And the scoreboard and digital, uh, digital scoreboard like a stadium, we're finalizing the contract, the uh, agreement on the financing. We expect to have it finished by middle of September. Slide 22, the yeah, HVC equipment controls uh, district-wide. We have some funding allocated, a million nine, 941,000. Uh, we're working on the specs, finalizing the different uh, departments or schools involved. And we, we don't have a proposal yet, but as soon as we have more information, we'll let you know. But it's part of the allocation that the board made. And uh, the last project, we had allocated funds for Roosevelt Elementary. We haven't done anything with that project. And, that the end of the report. Any questions? Andres, you gave us a lot of completion dates. Um, yes, sir. <clears throat> and I'm not going to really hassle you too bad due to the fact that we need to get our principals home. But on our next meeting, I do want a status of where the projects are at. Okay. And uh, what phase of construction. Okay. So uh, moving forward, make sure that, that you prepare something of that sort. I know we have started with... Uh, with the field house, I believe. Yes, sir. What other projects have kicked off? Tennis courts. The, the lighting? Yes. Uh -huh. We've got the tennis courts lighting. Um, Mr. Lopez, the uh, roofing has already kicked off as well. Okay. The uh, field house. And um, we're still working on, on the others. Any so we should get started any pretty soon in uh, the K projects. Any HVAC projects that are going on or are going to start this summer? HVAC, yes. Well, they're yeah. going to order the equipment already. We've been doing, uh, we've been doing uh, uh, a lot of the projects in-house, so we're ordering equipment. The, uh, the one for Silva Gonzalez and Kate, uh, the uh, notice to proceed uh, has been already released, or rather the PO has been released, uh, and uh, notice to proceed uh, was also released, I believe, today. Uh, but yeah, that one, that one's already, the equipment's already on order for that. And overall, Andres, I guess we have enough money uh, for all these facilities, or we're short a couple of million that we need? No, we have money between fund balance and the loan we got and the lease purchase agreement that we're getting for the scoreboard, we should have money for all the projects. We have money for all the projects. Okay. Okay, you said fund balance, but... Yes, and I gave you a report that has more detail on it. Right. Can you clarify that uh, on the fund balance? You're not going... Fund balance assigned for facilities. Assigned for facilities. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Sanchez, uh, real quick. Um, yes, sir. I know we're, we're working with the city for, for the parking lots. Mm -hmm. Is there smaller uh, projects like, like the uh, drop-off areas at the high schools, you know, that we can do, you know, and, and, and you know, utilize the summer um, if there are smaller, a smaller project and save the bigger projects for, you know, the, the work that we're going to be doing with the city? Uh, I just hate for the summer to go by and some of these areas 
you know, that we're just patching and patching and patching. You know, is there, if, there's, if there's smaller uh, projects, paving projects that we can do, you know, uh, if, we can, if we have money uh, to, to take advantage of the, of the summer months, uh, instead of waiting around and, or, or just saving the bigger, the bigger parking lots for, for the city like, uh, like we're, we're planning on. In-house, we can't. We don't have the equipment, uh, uh, Dr. Rodriguez. Um, but uh, we would have to go through the procurement method of construction to get that done. How are engineers to design the specs for it? But, uh, Dr. have you all prioritized which parking lots need the most improvement? Uh, yes. We have, which were the top four that, were the, that we, yes, we have? Yes, we have. We have Wesico High School. I know East High School had that drive <coughs> on the, uh, <coughs> off of uh, uh, Airport Drive. Okay. Uh, which was already done by the city. Right. Wesico High School is another one. Uh, we got Memorial there, Airport as well, and the uh, Early College uh, campus. Okay. So I prioritize. All right. There's a possibility of saving some money when uh, we're, go we're going to with some new parking lots at Silva and, uh, and, uh, Gonzalez. And Gonzalez, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, when, when we get on with that contractor, there's a possibility that we'll be able to negotiate some of the other repairs required at the other schools because he's already going to be working on site. I know that it's something that uh, has to go through bidding and, and he has to give us prices. So, but if we prepare for that, so when it, that, uh, the contractor's hire, we can possibly uh, negotiate or change order of some sort. Mm -hmm. Well, but Okay. That, that one, I think we'll have to go at it again because yeah. we, we have a proposal. We're um, working on the contract to so send it to them, okay. but it's just for those two projects. Okay. I just wanted to go over some of the numbers. Um, when Which, we transferred money to the self funded insurance, that was because of the shortfall from last fiscal year. Is that right? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. And so that was, I think, $4.1 million. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So what I guess what I was looking at was. Right now on our construction projects, we're 3.2 million over budget, right? On the, that was the final number on the, on the differences? Right. The, the, what we had initially, no, basically what we estimated was gonna cost us. Okay. Not that we don't have the money. Right, so under the initial budget, and now we're 3.2. Uh-huh. And then we had a 1.9 million hit to the ADA and a 4.1 million transfer to make up for a short fall from last year. So I just wanted to, Point that out to the board. We're about nine million dollars that we have had to spend. That I think not that we didn't need it, but we're going to have some very nice facilities coming up, right? But it also means <coughs> that we need to really watch the purse strings in the next coming months and the next budget because we have spent a lot of money extra this fiscal year. Yes. Yeah. On the part, part of the deficit, three million deficit there, the, getting the loan of one point four million for the scoreboard, that's included in there already. And we can absorb this safely. Yes, the, the transfer to the self-insurance fund has been taken care of into consideration for the numbers here. I mean, at least that's a, that's, a, that's a silver lining in that next year we won't have that $4 million shortfall, so we can actually save that money in next year's budget, right? Or being reallocated, is that right? Well, uh, we will have to spend more. Right now, the third page shows about $2.6 million left in fund balance for facilities for all the needs that we have available. Yeah. Okay. Uh, That's for, for this. Plus the money for the Roosevelt School that hasn't been used. And that money is going to roll over into the next fiscal year, Yeah, right? that won't stay there. That's, an, that's already in fine balance, so it doesn't move anywhere. How much money do we add to that in the next budget? More for next year, we might not be able to add much because uh, usually when we have excess, we'll add it. But because we're short on the ADA, I mentioned that we might be able to close even, which means the money. By using money. this money? No, 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 not oh. touching this money, not touching this money. That's oh, okay. the budget by itself in its okay, own. Okay, I see. The, this fund balance stays separate. Oh, I see. So the next year, if we, were, if we project a lower ADA, we're mm -hmm. going to take the money that we would have gotten out of the facilities budget. Is that right? No, no. For next year, we're going to budget less revenues. So we expect less ADA, we're going to budget less revenues okay. and less expenditures. We're going to try to balance the budget as well. Okay. So we don't go into a deficit. Okay. So this money will be... In case we need to buy more computers, which usually come from fund balance for facilities, so the need, we'll take it from there, or we wait next year. And we have a budget workshop when? Next Monday. On Monday? Monday first, yes. And you're going this to address all the concerns we have on the, on the budget? Hopefully most of them, yes. Okay. Uh, I do want to point out, uh, Mr. Lopez, uh, that we do have the architects and engineers of the corresponding projects should you have any questions. <coughs> Now, Andres, uh, the total amount of dollars that we're spending on construction, uh, 
uh, right now is, is how much? Oh, uh, on, on the projects that we have approved. Estimated 34. Almost 38 million. 38 million? Uh -huh. yeah. The second column in <coughs> yellow. Now, was that including some buses that, that we purchased? Yeah, that included the buses. Okay, but just for construction? Okay. Um, Muscle man, so more or less. Yes. Construction. About 35, 34. 34, 35 yeah. million. Uh -huh. Yes, it's a million for buses and two million for computers. Okay. And well, you know, and, and, and the statement I, I, I want to say is, is, is simple. It's that $35 million that we're spending on construction going forward, is, we're, the district, our taxpayers are going to pay 100%. And in some cases, plus interest. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, going forward or, or looking back, we had tried to pass a, a bond of where we're going to wind up paying like 30%. 30. And the state was going to fund us. Uh, like 70 percent, is that correct? Yes, 65. Do you remember they were paying the 70 million out of 109 million? The state. We were gonna go in 109. 109. That was the bond issue that we had. And we were gonna pay back only 39 million. 39 million. Yes. So the 70 million dollars the state was going to fund was to go um, because of our economic status. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. The, so going forward, we will have to visit that. Uh, that bond again because there, I know that the construction projects that we're we're addressing here are desperate needs to and and it doesn't really uh, catch us up 100%. And, and there are projects that are not listed that we also need like more additional. Yeah, there's more projects that we have. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. I just want to state that. Okay, um, again, Andres, make sure that uh, at our next meeting, and I, and I don't want to keep the principals here any longer than we have to, uh, that we have a status on uh, on the project. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. We'll have it ready. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and I want to thank the architects that are here on, on their respective firms that, for being here. Thank you, gentlemen. Does that con conclude your presentation, Doctor? Yes, it does. Okay, we're going to move on to item number 11, consent agenda. And I'll start on my left, Dr. Rodriguez. Do you have anything to pull? Uh, let's pull F. Okay. okay. Pull number F. Isidoro? None. None. Oscar? No, sir. Andrew? Letter O, item number four. O, item number four. And Patrick? No, sir. And I will not be pulling anything myself, so is there a motion? A motion to approve the consent agenda without items F and O4. Second. Second. Motion by Patrick and a second by uh, <coughs> Andrew. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. <coughs> Motion carries. Okay, start with F. I just wanted to, you know, highlight this this uh, grant here. You know, I, I think it's, you know, whoever, you know, uh, worked on this grant. I think I saw, was it Mr. Peterson, Mr. Dyer? You know, it, it's, it's, that's a great, uh, project here and 2.6 million over four years you know I know that was one of my questions from the beginning you know I, I, a lot of uh, students are being sent home with with uh, homework that's online based and internet based and and that was always you know question of mine as to how how some of these we I think we take you know internet and Wi-Fi for granted a lot of times and you know thank you for for working on that that's that's great uh, thank you very much and motion to approve item F. Second. Second. Motion by Patrick and a second by Andrew to approve item F. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Great job, Ms. Dyer. Motion carries. Uh, let the record reflect that Dr. Rivera joined the meeting at 751. Okay. Uh, Andrew, item O. Four. Yep. I just want to see uh, how much money we are amending. For the fine arts, for the tech, for the summer program. 
and where we're pulling it from. Uh, these funds we had allocated uh, in the budget an amount of the function 11, and it's coming from there. We had a contingency account that we had set up, and it's coming from there. How much? We, the total here is 160, almost 163,000. 163? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. I move to approve. Second. Motion by Andrew and a second by Patrick Kennedy to approve item O number four. The assistant superintendent. Is there any further discussion? There being Andres. none. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. I said thank you. Thank you. There being none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Dr. Canales, make sure that we send the appropriate thank yous and letters to all the people that donated. Will do. Great, thanks. Thank you. Item number 12, discussion items. Uh, item A would be interim financial report for the eight month ended April 30th, 2018. Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, we have Mr. Sanchez who will present this discussion item. Yes. For the eight months ended April 30th, 2018 in the general fund of a budget of 172.9 million, we have received 125,706,000, which represents 72.67%. Of that, from the local revenues out of 26.3 million uh, budgeted, we have received 26,657,000, which represents 101%. The largest number in that was property taxes, which we have uh, received uh, pretty much the goal that we had set up on our taxes. In state revenues out of 131 million, we have received 89, which is 68%. You know, the federal, res federal sources of 15.6 million, we have received 9.8 million, which represents 62.7%. <clears throat> On expenditures of all functions together, out of 175 million, 8,000, we have ex uh, expended or encumbered 106 million, 461,000, which represents 60.83%. Right now, in eight months, uh, it represents 66.66% uh, 66 uh, 66 of the budget. So at 61, we're doing okay. Any questions that, on that? Is that your report? <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, does anybody have any questions? I guess uh, on pupil transportation, uh, percentage is at 86%. So even though with, with summer school, we'll have enough funds for, for summer school? Yes, sir. Yes. Even uh, though, go ahead. The, 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 the funds are pretty much covered, oh. and uh, the summer includes some of the money to allocate for tra some travel. Okay. But as far as the, pretty much summer school will be the end, okay. plus salaries for the, the payroll. For our gas and other items, uh, it's going to taper down the expenses a lot. Okay. Any function near uh, going to the red? No, so transportation is the one that is the closest at 86%. Right. Uh, the other ones are pretty close to the amount at 66%. 41? 41, it's at um, 63%. Can you divide that by, uh, I think I mentioned last time, to get the amount for attorney's fees? Yes, sir. Uh, all together? I, yes, I, I have it. At, I did not release it. I finished it last week. I had some delays and I added some additional months to it. But I will send it this, this Friday. Board update. Can we also look at travel? For administration, I kind of want to take a look at that too. Okay, on uh, the function 41? Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. On the transportation, don't forget, uh, Andres, you also cut back on, uh, cut back on, that. on that last year. Sorry, say that again? On the transportation, uh -huh. you, you had cut back, I don't remember. Yes, if what we amount missed a cut and they would put some money back. You put some money back? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Have you put enough back like uh, as to what they, where they were or just a little bit? No, I didn't, I didn't put as much. A lot of the money was almost half a million that had been placed many <clears> years ago when the uh, price of fuel was going up a lot. And it started going and down and we never again. took it's it going back. Up. Right. Yes. Going up again. Yes, sir. No, we're, we're working with them on that. Okay. So if they get close to 100% and you have to allocate some money for the well, summer, you We'll come back to the board, yes, sir. Okay. So with four months to go, do you have an idea on your, on your budget 
when you look at your revenues and expenditures, what you're going to have left over at the end of the year, August uh, 31st? Probably not much. I'm looking at breaking even right now. Breaking even? Because of the deficit on ADA state revenues, increases on local taxes, and not spending some of the money we have budgeted. You usually, usually here you have millions of dollars left over. Um, and you use doesn't. that for the following year's budget. Right, because we have enough revenues and we don't spend uh, other ones. So we save the budget that we don't spend on salaries okay, or something like that. Okay, just keep us posted. Yes, sir, we'll yeah. let you know. We have a budget meeting on, on Monday, Monday? Next, next Monday. Yeah, it's coming Monday the 21st. What time? At what time? Well, I'm not sure yet, but 6 o'clock. you got five, you four graduations next week at night, yeah, plus a Monday. Can we... Get together, see about a noon meeting, perhaps. Sure. On the 21st. You got five straight nights, guys? Yeah. It's long. Oh, next week, yes. Yep. Why is that meeting next week important for us to meet? Well, well, we'll try to Besides come up the budget, what else do you have? Well, we, uh, have we do have the item. facilities project for Westaco East and Westaco High School, facility renovations. And we that have could to have been done on tonight's meeting? No, the proposal is open tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Well, get us some more time if you can on the, on the, on the oh, we need more time on the budget. Because he's correct on, on saying that we have all the graduations next week, next week and, and then some of us still have a day job. So. <coughs> okay. Actually, graduation is the following week. Is but it? Next week. Oh, no, next week. Next week. Next week. 22nd, 23rd. Ready? Can you look at maybe the 28th? I mean, that's it's the following Monday. Day, but starting Tuesday. It's Memorial Day on a Monday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Memorial Day. <laughs> we we can do it. It would <laughs> talk to you. Yeah. You get us a date, Doc. We'll go, we'll go from there. Monday. Okay. Monday at noon. Monday at noon. Okay. You all can make it. Okay. I'll be here. All right. Okay. Okay. Item, uh, item B, acknowledgement, acknowledgement of Hidalgo County Tax Office Collection Report for March 2018 and April 2018. Current taxes and delinquent taxes. Dr. Canales. Okay. For this item, we do have Mr. Sanchez. Yes. For the March uh, 31st, March 31, 2018, uh, report on taxes. On current taxes, the county reported collections of 23,831,190. Uh, that represents 90.73% of the levy, and that is 6%, uh, no, 0.06% lower than the prior year, when the collection was 90.79%. On the prior year's levies, they reported 751,322 collections which represent 18.26% of the levy at the, time, at the beginning of the year. Last year, the percentage of collection was 18.45. That represents 0.19% less collections. For the April report, April 30, current taxes collected year to date were 24,219,350. That is 92.35% <coughs> of the current levy the year before, the collection percentage was 92.05. That represents 0.30% more collections. And on the prior year's levy, the collections were year to date 902,807, which represents 22.16%. The year before, the collections were 20.72%. That is 1.44% uh, higher collections on the prior year levies for April. Any questions? And this on your values. Did the state values match the local values? <coughs> for right, ne next year we are local. Here? For next year we are. You didn't have to appeal? No, we don't have, no, sir. They give us local values. That was good. Any questions, comments? Okay, moving on, item C. Presentation by Purdue, Brendan Fielder, Collins, and Mott, LLP, delinquent tax attorneys firm of the Delinquent Tax Collection Activity Report for the period of September 1st, 2017 through February 28th, 2018. Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, we do have a presentation today. Good, Good evening, evening, Dr. Canales, President Lopez, members of the board. For the record, my name is Iram Gutierrez, partner with <coughs> Purdue, Brandon Fielder, Collins and Mott. 
your delinquent tax firm. I'm here to present you with the, uh, your delinquent tax collection report for the first six months of 2017 and 2018, that being in the period of September 1st, 2017 through September 28th of 2018. Our delinquent tax collection program designed for Westlake YSD uh, is, uh, is designed with an emphasis in working with your taxpayers. To that end, our local uh, collections office has uh, conducted over 11,800 phone contacts with taxpayers owing delinquent taxes to Westlake YSD. We also conduct mass mailings out of our office. Uh, during this period, we have sent over 2,283 mailings, uh, uh, separate notices of delinquency from our office. Uh, that is in addition to our specialized notices that are, that are sent uh, from our office as well. Uh, when the phone contacts and mailings do not have the desired effect, we also conduct property inspections. During this period, we have conducted 95 property inspections. During this period, we have entered into 59 payment agreements involving over $91,000 owed to Westlake YSD. Uh, when all those efforts do not have the desired effect, we do proceed to litigation. And during this period, we have filed 114 original petitions and interventions involving over $832,000 in base tax owed to the school district. Uh, once we take a judgment, uh, we still try to work with the taxpayers and try to collect the delinquent uh, taxes owed to the school districts. However, when that does not work, we do proceed to uh, tax sales. And during this period, we have uh, put up 27 properties up for tax sale. The results are here on page four of your uh, uh, report. 15 properties were pulled because we entered into payment agreements. That was involving over $45,000 owed to the school district. Four properties were struck off to the taxing entities involving over $23,490 owed to Westlake YSD. Eight properties were sold, bringing in over $29,400 to the school district. We also represent you in federal court in bankruptcies. During this period, we filed three new proofs of claim involving over, uh, over $8,500 owed to the school district. Of course, all our efforts are geared to one goal, and that is to collect your delinquent taxes. During this period, we have collected $644,219 in base tax and an additional $298,000 in penalties and interest for a grand total of $942,280. On page five, you'll see a comparison of this six months compared to the uh, same period of the previous fiscal year. As you can see on the right-hand side, the bar graph shows a collection rate of 15.63% compared to last year, 15.28%, an improvement of 0.35% over the same period last year. Uh, down at the bottom, it'll show you the, uh, the, the uh, uh, delinquent levies for both of those fiscal years and the dollars collected for, uh, for those fiscal years, a comparison of those two as well. And uh, that concludes my report, and I open it up for any questions you might have. Any questions? Good job. It looks good. Good. Thank you. Thank it you. Looks good. Thank you. No, no one lost their home. Uh, we did sell eight properties, but there was no uh, homesteads that were sold during this period. Were they vacant lots? I'm sorry? Vacant lots or just We abandoned? have some vacant lots. I think we did have some uh, one that had some uh, kind of a dilapidated uh, structure on it as well. Uh, and then, of course, there were some struck off properties, uh, struck off to the taxing entities, uh, four properties that were struck off. Um, to my understanding, none of those were homesteads either. Okay. Dr. Re Dr. Rivera has stated in the past, and, and uh, I believe this whole board believes that same philosophy mm -hmm. of we do not want to put any people out. Mm -hmm. We do not want to hurt anybody personally and uh, make every effort to work uh, with people to, to get the taxes collected. Absolutely. Okay. We, we understand that, and that's what we've been doing, and make, making sure we work with every taxpayer. Now, I have noticed uh, your signs around town and, and places, and they have been on vacant lots. Mm -hmm. And yes. that started uh, about a year ago, I'm going to say. And it's a good thing that now I see new homes going up on those vacant lots, which means added uh, 
added tax revenues coming to the, to the district and more students coming also. So that's a good thing. And, and thank you for your report. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. <clears throat> item number 13, discussion and possible action items. Item A, discussion and possible action for the board to approve a resolution regarding the alternative graduation requirements as authorized by Texas Education Code 28.0251. Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, this one will impact former students who entered ninth grade before the 2011-2012 school year, but who have not performed satisfactorily on relevant exit exams for our state. This new administrative code, which was effective May 3, 2018, allows the school district to determine whether the student qualifies to graduate and receive a high school diploma. We're recommending that you approve this resolution regarding the alternative graduation requirements uh, as authorized by Texas Education Code, Statute 28.0251. I move to approve the resolution. Second. I have a motion by Patrick and a second by Andrew to approve the resolution. Is there any further discussion? How many, how, how many students do we have that fall into this category? Ms. Peterson. <coughs> Mrs. Wells has identified about 10 at South Palm Gardens that qualify, and then at East and High, there are about a dozen at each school. We haven't yet contacted all of them. We're trying to contact everyone that qualifies. Okay. 34 total. They're not, they're not enrolled in. They are not, not enrolled, although enrolled. some of them have returned to South Palm Gardens to... Um, to talk to Mrs. Wells, she's talked to most of hers. Okay. Any further questions, comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed saying no. Motion carries. Item B, discussion and possible action for the board to consider renewal of the district's agreement with Blue Cross Blue Shield of Texas to administer the district's self-funded employee benefit program for fiscal year 2018-2019 or Authorize administration to solicit proposals for same. Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, last year the district conducted an RFP for TPA services. SWBC uh, recommended, which was a, our consultant, recommended Blue Cross Blue Shield based on the anticipated higher network discounts, a larger network, and performance guarantees. Um, as for their best and final offer, uh, there will be a 4.7% increase in administrative fees as outlined below. Uh, we have Mr. Dolorosa here to answer any questions that you may have. And we are recommending a renewal with Blue Cross Blue Shield for the 2018-2019 school year. What fees are going up? Administration fees. Yes, Mr. Gonzalez, the administrative fee uh, went up uh, from $38.70 to $40.50. And that was in their best and final uh, offer last year, so we were expecting it. From 38 to 40? Yes, sir. 3870 to 4050. And this so. is the first year, right? We will be going into year two. Correct. Year two. I'll move to approve. I'll second. We have a motion by Andrew and a second by Oscar to approve uh, the board's recommendation to stay with uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield. Is there any further discussion? Are you happy with the firm? Yes, sir. The, the, work they've done? the plan is running well, um, so at this point, we don't see any need to uh, take it out to bid. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed saying no. Motion carries. Item C, discussion of possible action for the board to consider renewal of the district's agreement with American <coughs> Healthcare to provide pharmacy benefits management services, PBM, for the district's self-funded employee benefits program for fiscal year 2018-2019 or authorize administration to solicit proposals for same. Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, last year we also conducted an RFP for PBM services. The specifications called for a total transparent model. Uh, this was, well, it will be the first year. This will be a per second year <coughs> renewal option after uh, the administration is recommending that we continue for a second year with the current provider, American Healthcare, AHC, to provide pharmacy benefit management for the district's self-funded employees benefit plan for 2018-2019. And we have Mr. Dolorosa here to answer any questions you may have. Is there any concerns? Uh, no, sir. 
Uh, they've been doing well. Uh, it's always scary when um, a new PBM comes in because you never know which one, which you're going to get. Like the movie says, uh, there are a lot of good companies and there, there are some bad apples. So uh, I, have, I don't see any uh, need at this time. They've been doing what they uh, said they're going to be doing, being transparent. And Mr. Gonzalez, the fees that you asked for are actually on this agenda item uh, that you asked for during the, the presentation. So. Um, really, the disruption that's caused by moving, in, in my opinion, is, is not worth the, the move at this time. The, you've, you've combined the costs on the PBM and the health together, is that correct? On uh, the report? On the report, they're broken, they're, they're, they're broken out. They're, they're separated. Are, are they coming into where the costs are where you expected? Are they under? under or right now, we're under about $48,000 for this time last year. Mike, do, do PBMs negotiate discounts on, on medications like, like the TPAs do on, on procedures? Do they, is there? The, they, uh, they participate in uh, several different networks, similar to the Blue Cross and Blue Shield network. There's different networks that uh, the pharmacies used uh, to purchase medication. So yes, they do negotiate with those, uh, uh, the networks actually negotiate with the drug manufacturers, and then uh, the TPA negotiates with uh, the network, if you will. So what they propose is an average wholesale price for <laughs> brand drugs of average wholesale price minus 18%, and for the generics, it's an average wholesale price minus 81%. So um, those numbers do fluctuate a little bit depending on the type of medication, how expensive it is. As I mentioned, specialty drugs are a lot more expensive, uh, and so there's really, you know, little rigor room, if you will, for that. But uh, what, we, what I do like about this is it is transparent. I'm not seeing any hidden fees. I'm not seeing any spread costs uh, being spread out. So uh, if I did have issues with them, you would have a different recommendation. When's the renewal date on this? 9-1, September 1st. 9-1. Mm -hmm. My only concern is just the, like I stated earlier, is, is you know, the, uh, from the patient side, I've, I've heard some concerns with, with the uh, turnaround time, uh, especially on, on prior authorizations. And I guess they answered my question earlier, they don't have that uh, electronic prior authorization that uh, I think most of uh, the bigger PBMs you know, utilize and have. And um, that, that would just be my, my issue with them, you know, seeing both sides of it as a, a prescribing and also from, from patients and uh, employees who have raised some concerns about it. Uh, you would think that, you know, nowadays, you know, uh, electronic prior, prior authorizations would pretty much be standard for, for most of these PBMs. Um, I don't know. Anybody else? Doctor, I think you're the only one up here who actually has to deal with mm -hmm. insurance companies and payment. And what, what would you think about this program? Do you think we should renew or do you think we should look at other options? Um, If we do go out for our RFPs, is it, can we, can we see what, what else is out there? And then if we decide we want to stay with American, we, we can uh, opt for that? How, how would that work? Well, no, because if, if, you, if we don't accept the renewal, if we don't renew, then we would have to issue an RFP. So um, <coughs> everything pretty much, uh, they would have to submit another, bill, another bid. And you're okay with this one, your recommendation? I, I move, am, sir. Move to approve. Second. A motion to approve and a second by, by uh, Dr. Rivera and a second by uh, Andrew Gonzalez. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, Who, what are the ayes? One, two, three. So yes. yes. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, all those opposed? You got Okay, so it does not pass. So I guess I need another motion. I move to authorize the administration to solicit proposals. Vote for proposals. Second. Okay, I have a motion by Patrick and a second by Isidoro to authorize administration to solicit proposals for same. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Show a hand, please. One, two, three. Okay. Opposed? All opposed. 
I think we need to follow the uh, recommendation of administration. Motion carries. Item D, discussion and possible action for the board to consider the renewal of district's group dental insurance with Lincoln Financial Group through Salazar Insurance Group and Tamez Financial Group for the fiscal year 2018-2019 or authorize the administration to solicit proposals for same. Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, as part of the comprehensive benefit package to employees, Wesco ISD provides basic dental insurance at no cost to all employees. Employees um, may add their dependents to the dental plan at a, at a reduced rate, and they have the option to buy up to a higher dental plan with expanded benefits. Last year, we went out for an RFP process for group dental insurance, and Lincoln, Finan Lincoln Financial Group was selected. The district would be entering the second year of a third year renewal option. The administration is recommending Lincoln Financial Group through Salasad Insurance Group and Damez Financial Group for fiscal year 2018-2019. So move. I'll second. I have a motion by Sidoro and a second by Oscar to approve uh, the existing program for the dental insurance. Is there any further discussion? Are you satisfied with this deal yes, well? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Nobody complains? No complaints? No, we, we address issues as they come up, so nothing, not, nobody's ever 100% satisfied with their dental insurance, but uh, overall, yes. Okay. Any it's, a very, further, it's a very good plan. Any further comments? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed saying no. Motion carries. Item E, discussion and possible action for the board to consider renewal of the district's agreement with TriStar Risk Management to administer the district's self-funded workers' compensation program for the fiscal year 2018-2019. I move or, to renew. Or authorize administration to solicit proposals for same. A motion by Patrick and a second by? Oscar. Second by Oscar. Is there any further discussion? The workers' comp numbers look good. Mm -hmm. I, I assume that's being managed well. They did. Is that yes, correct? Sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed saying no. Motion carries. F, item F, <coughs> discussion and possible action for the board to consider renewal of the district's employer paid term life accidental death and dismemberment insurance with Dearborn National Life Insurance through the interlocal partic participation agreement with the Texas Educational Employers Benefit Cooperative TEEBC or authorized administration to solicit proposal for same. Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, we're recommending a renewal for the district's employer paid term life AD and D through Dearborn National Life Insurance through the interlocal participation agreement with the Texas Educational Employees Benefit Cooperative. So our employees, um, as an enhanced benefit, the district provides all employees with 25,000 of term life insurance at no cost to the employee. And employees may also purchase up to 100000 in additional life insurance at group rates. So move to approve. Second. Motion by Sidoro and a second by Patrick to approve the existing insurance. Continue. Is there any further discussion? I just want to add that that's a, it's a great thing. And I don't know whether all districts do that for their employees. Um, but... Uh, during trying times of, uh, of hardship when uh, you lose a loved one, um, that uh, money coming in, I mean, it's not going to make things better, but it, it will help in taking care of some unexpected costs. So I'm going to say, I, you know, not all the districts are doing it. Uh, they should, mm -hmm. and because we are, and uh, it's a good thing for employees and, and their families, you know, thinking, thinking of them. Some districts have a less amount than the 25,000. Yeah. Well, 20, 25 is good. So, and I think this says we're paying a dollar 20 per employee for that kind of coverage. So, that's not bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. Locked in through 2020. Yeah. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed saying no. Motion carries. Item number 14, closed meeting to discuss A, personnel matters, De Texas Government Code 551.074. Number one, employment of personnel. Two, resignations. 
Three, deliberation regarding the appointment, employment, evaluation, reassignment, duties, discipline, or dismissal of a public officer or employee. Texas Government Code 551.074 and 551.071. Item B, deliberation regarding the acquisition of real property. Texas Government Code 551.072. And item C, consultation with attorney regarding A, a pending contemplated litigation. Item B, a settlement offer or C, a matter in which the duty of the attorney of West Coast D under the Texas Disciplinary Rules of Professional Conduct of the State Bar of the <clears throat> Texas clearly conflicts with Chapter 551 of Texas Government Code, Texas Government Code 551.071. And sub number one under that topic is consultation with counsel regarding insurance audit. The time is 823 and this board is going into closed session. Time is uh, 9.10. This board is back in open session. We'll give a second or two so that the tapes can be changed in the back. And somebody's got to explain that to me one of these days. What exactly they're doing. CTE or something. Yes. There you go, Ready? Okay. Let the record reflect, first of all, that Dr. Rivera left the meeting at 9.07. Um, items to be discussed that we discussed in closed session was personnel matters. Item uh, Texas Government Code 551.074. Item number one was employment of personnel, Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, we recommend that you approve the recommendations of contracts so for certified professional personnel. I'll second. Motion by Andrew and second by Oscar. Uh, is there any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Item number two is resignation. Is that a non-action or is that an action item? Are there any resignations that were effective before the end of the school year? Non-action. Item two, no, number two is a non-action item. Item number three is deliberation regarding the appointment, employment evaluation, reassignment duties, discipline, or dismissal of a public officer or employee, Texas Government Code 551.074. And 551.071, Dr. Canales. Non-action? Non-action. Non-action item. <coughs> then we have B, deliberation regarding the acquisition of real property, Texas Government 551.072, also non-action item. Then we discussed item C, consultation with attorney regarding independent accountability litigation, B, a settlement offer, a matter in which the duty of the attorney of West Coast SD under the Texas government disciplinary rules, professional conduct, the State Bar of Texas clearly conflicts. Chapter Code 501, Texas Government Code, Texas Government Code 551.071. Consultation with counsel regarding insurance audit. That is also a non-action item. And that is all the items that we discussed in closed session. So we move on to item number 16, adjournment. So move. Time is 9.12 and this meeting is concluded. concluded.